Miss Yukita's work also related to the aspect related to earthquake recovery in the disaster area. And in 2014, she was selected as one of the seven architects under 35 years old in Japan. So that means I will have one year left for me to be able to achieve similar accomplishment like her, yeah? Finger crossed to me. Um, <laughs> all right, again, uh, I will not dwell too much and also would like to mention that in 2017, she was selected to be one of Solution Maker Talents at UNLEASH Unleashed Lab for the UN 2030 Agenda for SGDs and won the Bronze Award as member of Recovering Giants. Ms. Yukito also served as a young lecturer at Musashino Art University in Japan and tutor of the immersion program in Japan held by Pratt Institute School of Design in New York and tutor at the ASEAN Congress of Architects Student Jamboree for 2021 in Shanghai and 2018 in Tokyo. Without further ado, I would like to invite Ms. Yukito to present uh, her works presentation. And Ms. Yukito, time and uh, space is yours. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Yuki Ito uh, from Japan, and I'm so happy to meet you all today uh, on this uh, wonderful uh, opportunity. Uh, and so the first, uh, I would like to uh, thank you uh, to the university and the, the everyone involved uh, uh, as an uh, uh, involved in this uh, event uh, for providing uh, such uh, a great venue. Thank you. And so I wanna, uh, I would like to start my presentation. Okay, so uh, today uh, I would like to share with uh, you my architecture journey as an Asian female architect. Uh, I am uh, currently uh, 38 years old. I studied architecture for a total of six years at an art university and the graduate school in Japan. Uh, it has been 40 years uh, since I graduated uh, and uh, 20 years since I first met architecture. Uh, then uh, I am an uh, omniverse architect based in Tokyo. Why omniverse? I'm not a pure architect because not so much design work as an individual architect. My journey has taken me from designing as a team, many exhibitions and organizing them, including installations, uh, urban planning for the construction city after the earthquake uh, natural disaster, uh, historical library uh, preservation project as a researcher at the University of Tokyo, uh, and the carpentry experience on my own project uh, of exterior world innovation, and uh, some current uh, international activities. Uh, yeah, you introduced me already, so uh, yeah. So it's a bit complicated and uh, I don't know what is really my job, uh, but uh, I'm still exploring and exploring how I myself can uh, relate to a wide ocean of architecture. And uh, I hope that my journey uh, it is uh, still in progress, but it led me to something good in the future. And I was born and the lights in Shibuya, Tokyo. Uh, it is a 10 minute walk from uh, Scramble Square. Uh, you may have seen this uh, crazy uh, photo. Uh, people, people, people. <laughs> I grew up uh, seeing this uh, scene every day. Uh, Shibuya was a commercial area, a town where not many families lived, lived uh, very few children. Uh, there are no regular elementary schools to go to all the way from the enrollment to graduation. 
the landscape of building in the city uh, has looked the same for a long time now, uh, but the contents keep changing. Uh, stores, uh, restaurants, uh, a part of commercial facilities are uh, replaced as every year uh, uh, for economic reasons. Uh, thousands of cars are passing by every day. Then uh, I could not belong to the community, and I could not make any connection with my hometown with uh, high buildings. Uh, I was a very shy girl, a little over a meter tall, uh, but I was, uh, as I grew older, I stopped looking at the buildings, uh, you know, the, because I found people. I realized that human activity shapes the city, uh, how human activities and uh, figures could be connected to the concept of architecture. Uh, this was the beginning of my architecture journey. And so this is a housing project that I worked on in my graduate uh, level under my professor. Uh, it is a very small house near the sea, a residence for two uh, elder, elderly couples. Uh, the design uh, members were my professor and myself and the one classmate. Uh, this is the interior, uh, and uh, we uh, interviewed the client about what they intended to spend their days doing, and they then designed the house by connecting uh, these actions uh, together like a uh, necklace of parts. Uh, it a, is a very primitive uh, minimalist architecture. Uh, it's a planning and section and revision and the, the photo. So the it's interior. Then uh, it, this is a similar graduate project, a house for a family of three, a couple and a middle school boy in the city uh, in Chiba Prefecture. Uh, the house was designed to be the maximum square footage that uh, could uh, legally but uh, built on the lot. The previous uh, house uh, I showed uh, aimed the aimed for minimum, and this is the maximum. Uh, it's a living room. Then uh, both located in Chiba Prefecture uh, next to Tokyo uh, are so small houses. Then I was uh, very uh, fortunate to have been involved in the design of these two houses while I was a graduate student. Uh, at, that, at this time, uh, perhaps uh, I was the most uh, architecture one of my journey. It's a, uh, also interior. The, the right one is the glass there, and the left the photo, the void room. Uh, after graduation, I enrolled uh, in Itojuku, uh, a private school for working adults newly created by architect Toyo Ito. Uh, it was just when the Great East Japan earthquake uh, occurred in Japan. As a member of the Itojuku team, I went to the disaster area to work with the local government uh, and the people of the city uh, where everything had uh, been gone away by the tsunami uh, to come up with a new urban city. Uh, this was a completely different experience uh, from the architecture uh, I had studied before. This is the article, the magazine of that. Uh, then, so in one case, uh, they were uh, reduced uh, to a pile of little waste. The city still had a shelter of strong structure structural architecture that was still standing there, but uh, all the people inside had died. 
Uh, it was uh, very shocking to me that uh, only the architecture survived and not the people. Uh, yeah, we worked on this uh, this uh, project for a year. Then, uh, next, so I want to uh, talk about exhibitions. Then, so since uh, 2014, I have been doing a lot of exhibition work like that. The under 35 uh, young architect exhibition. Uh, this this one uh, is a popular competition to select the seven best young architect working in Japan. Uh, the judges was made up of uh, middle generation architects, just uh, one generation older than us, uh, including uh, so Hojima uh, Junya Ishigami or uh, others. Uh, I was selected by uh, for I was selected for one of them and uh, had a group exhibition and uh, the some talks event uh, at the uh, World Trade Center in Osaka. Uh, many students came there. Uh, yeah. Then. Uh, it's the entrance of the exhibition and the, the like that. And this is my uh, exhibition space and the, the model. And the, it's uh, under construction <laughs> to build my exhibition. Yeah, my uh, friend uh, helped me, helped me, and uh, that's my exhibition space. And the uh, student came there and uh, uh, came inside the model, and uh, it's a uh, yeah like that. Uh, and here are a few of the works there that were exhibited. It's a housing project. Uh, uh, with uh, red bricks, then uh, planning and the uh, section, section, the, it's a uh, living room of a family, uh, the bedroom and the, like that. Then the, this, it, this is a uh, traveling snail house. Uh, it is a self-built uh, mobile home house uh, with only few requirement. Uh, I can sleep inside. I can read a book and uh, eat something and uh, invite friend over for tea. And it's uh, models of that. Uh, then uh, under construction again. Then so I actually pulled this uh, snail house uh, like a cart and they traveled around different environments uh, such as the cities, forests, uh, and the residential areas. Uh, the small architecture was transformed into playground, uh, uh, furniture, and uh, sculpture, and architecture, depending on the place and uh, the activities of people. Then, so it's uh, like a window, and uh, I wanted to see the uh, boundary between architecture and the non-architecture changed by human action and the environment. Uh, yeah, children uh, came here and uh, play inside, like uh, the play sculpture. Then uh, after my trip, I brought snail house into my small apartment in Shibuya. Uh, and so it's uh, inside of uh, the snail house. Uh, I uh, lived in snail house for five years, uh, finally. <laughs> Then it's a planning uh, of my room. Uh, you can see that the snail house in the center. And uh, yeah, there are many doors. Uh, and uh, the snail house created some relationship with my apartment uh, like that. <laughs> yeah, I study uh, architecture inside like that. <laughs> Yeah.
Then, so my small brother uh, lived in the next room uh, of me, uh, which seems not so happy. <laughs> but I kept observing a changing uh, snail house with my life activities. Then I, I, I also exhibited at this uh, uh, exhibition animation. Uh, you can see the screen, small screen. Then uh, I'm going to show that video. Maybe uh oh I can mm. no walking just click oh yeah yeah yes <laughs> yeah it's just the just a hand drawing uh, the one old woman wake up in the morning, uh, on uh, her bed and uh, do something she she's moving and uh, the architecture is created uh, by her own activity and the own identity and the, the own experience uh, and the, I draw the 5000 uh, plan <laughs> drawing and they connected them into one animation yeah then so it's a the, the different one the, it's a time skip exhibition with uh, young architect fellows the, this is uh, site is uh, Tokyo uh, Aoyama, and uh, it's uh, the company the, that's commercial company's uh, entrance room, and it's also the video. Yeah. So just see for a while. It's the uh, name of the Prismic Gallery, and the uh, It is so small exhibition, but uh, you can see the the that's the stand for model uh, made uh, by the really soft plastic and the the waving by wind and the, the if people walk around they also uh, waving like that. And it's not me actually. <laughs> it's it's not me. <laughs> the the female, not different <laughs> one. Yeah. Then you can see that them. Then the changing environment we wanna create it. Okay. Then. Like that, not me actually, <laughs> and yeah, and it's uh, some uh, study works. Uh, uh, we have the uh, plus uh, acrylic base and the, the really soft uh, material, right? and uh, have the presentation. And uh, this is a uh, different one in uh, Tohoku University uh, and it at the uh, north part of Japan. Uh, it's also an uh, exhibition by a young architect only. Then that's planning and uh, it's inside. Uh, five uh, young architects exhibited together and our model mixed on the uh, stand. Okay like that then so yeah the the year after some exhibitions uh, i became a researcher at the university of tokyo and uh, was in charge of the uh, 
preservation uh, and the reservation of the university's uh, general library, uh, which was 97 years old at that time. Uh, this is uh, the overview of the uh, Renovation. The the architecture looks like uh, the giant uh, Gundam robot. <laughs> yes. Then uh, this is uh, before the renovation. You can see that the really it's really historical or the old buildings. You know. Then, uh, then so this is the section uh, view, and uh, I walked for the main building on the right. Uh, on the left is the the fountain uh, brother, uh, where a huge a new underground uh, book uh, book storage, uh, forty meters below uh, below ground level, was also built. That was new building, and so yeah, it's exterior and the uh, in interior views after renovation, uh, we uh, still keep that uh, historical the relief or the structure or materials inside. And yeah, it's uh, still, still works also the, uh, the preservation, yeah, preservated uh, like that. And it's a, uh, um, the preserved entrance and the, the newly uh, constructed entrance we designed. Okay, then so in 2017, uh, when the library design was uh, almost finished, I quite, uh, I exited my position as a researcher and uh, went to Denmark. Uh, I went to Copenhagen to uh, participate uh, as a solution maker in the first year of an innovation lab uh, called Unleash, uh, which was uh, launch launched by the United Nations in 2015 to propose the Sustainable uh, Development Goals Agenda. And they form all over the world, uh, thousands, uh, thousands of professionals and entrepreneurs, researchers, and uh, educators who had won the competition were uh, brought together. Uh, organizers uh, formed teams in each of the areas of the SDGs agenda to share and the solution making on the the various issues that uh, are happening around the world. I was assigned to the sustainable city uh, where we shared our experience and from the Great East Japan earthquake and created solutions for uh, waste management after natural disasters. Then this was a work kind of a workshop, uh, the short period and uh, uh, yeah, it was a great experience to work with a great team uh, of like-minded uh, uh, people. And fortunately, uh, we received the bronze award there. Then from Denmark, I moved to directly to New York City and uh, worked for a year as an overseas researcher at a nonprofit gallery near Times Square. Uh, it is a free architecture gallery called Storefront uh, for Art and Architecture, uh, designed by Stephen Hall. And you can see the part of the exterior wall uh, loaded <laughs> like this. Then, uh, yeah, there was a un so unique person, uh, and uh, Eva French. Uh, who became uh, the director of uh, the A school now. And uh, under her, I learned several uh, interesting exhibitions. Then I'm not sure if I have enough time, so I will make a bit of the slide show. The, it's uh, the souvenir exhibition that we created the new New, new York icon with uh, over 50 uh, local architects. Then uh, we also have uh, some event and the party, the inside the gallery uh, with uh, civic people. And it's an uh, uh, exhibition for Vito Aconti. And uh, it's uh, the 
other one with a big screen and the, the New York City, the history also, it's a um, really other uh with civic the marching on uh, band the we had uh, some performance uh, like that yeah <laughs> it's really the fun experience you can see <laughs> Then so yeah, we had uh, so many the event and the uh, oh sorry, uh, exhibition there. Then so in uh, 2018, I returned to Japan, and this is my own project for renovation of apartment, uh, just only exterior. Uh, the building, uh, which I believe it was uh, a little over 40 years, uh, was covered with uh, you can see this. Uh, thinly sliced brick uh, exterior material. Uh, the structure uh, was still good, but the uh, uh, mortar bond uh, used to uh, fasten the bricks to the structure wall was uh, aging and uh, causing the bricks to fall. Uh, such problems are frequent uh, in building of this age in Japan. Then I wanted to preserve the memory of how the carpenters uh, pasted the bricks one by one 40 years ago, because uh, there uh, I found trace uh, of their workmanship. Uh, as I said at the beginning of my presentation, uh, um, uh, you know, the, my uh, architecture activity is to uh, connect architecture with people's action. So uh, it was a very difficult uh, uh, work for me. And uh, so I used a new material for architecture. Uh, it's uh, the, uh, usually uh, we used for the uh, reconstruction of highway and the, the tunnel, uh, but uh, for, uh, buildings, exteriors, uh, the maker of material uh, set uh, no example uh, in Japan. So they stopped me to use that new material, but uh, I tried <laughs> to uh, use it. And uh, so many errors happened. Actually, the, the construction company uh, escaped away <laughs> in the end, yeah. Then, so I decided to become a carpenter myself. <laughs> Do you see it? That's me uh, painting the walls uh, on the fifth floor. I worked so carefully <laughs> like that. <laughs> then I and the one carpenter uh, finished painting the whole wall of that apartment building. <laughs> like that <laughs> complete <laughs> then so you know that it is uh, an apartment now uh, with memories of a carpentry work you know the people the activity okay so next i would like to talk about the new uh, topic of uh, educational activities uh, i am currently an adjunct lecturer at musashino art university in tokyo and uh, a tutor at the pratt institute in new york then uh, this is musashino art university uh, in tokyo and uh, it is a uh, top top one or two uh, private art uh, university in Japan. Then uh, usually in Japan, the architecture department are uh, uh, found in the engineering uh, facilities. Uh, so it is a bit uh, unusual to find them in art universities. Uh, I few more minutes okay <laughs> i mainly teach the first semester of uh, the freshman uh, and then in the fall i also teach senior uh, senior year and the second year graduate student and uh, 
graduate, uh, sorry, graduation project. Then it's each brought uh, institute from New York. They come to Japan only during the summer and they do design uh, programs related to Japan. Yeah, like that, yeah. And like that. <laughs> then, uh, yeah, it's uh, the, uh, my experience of Arcacia. It's a Tokyo convention. Then student jamboree, the students work, uh, you know, the, it's a tutor and the 200 students from 20 uh, second uh, Asian countries gathered and they were uh, divided into 10 teams under the supervision of 10 tutors to conduct workshops to solve problems uh, based on the uh, competition team. Then uh, my team, uh, there, so lovely student, and the, the theme is sustainability and the metabolizing. And we gave our presentation on the last day and they received uh, critiques from the guest uh, Japanese architects like that. Then uh, we did not forget the, to dance and they play like this. Okay, then uh, this is the uh, Alocasia Shanghai Convention, the also student jamboree. The, it was held only online due to the pandemic. Then, uh, yeah, uh, now I became a member. I joined the member of Alocasia Young Architect uh, on committee. Then last March for the first time, I participated in the um, international conference in uh, Mongolia last September. Then this is Nepal International Con uh, Convention uh, this January. Then I have met at, and they worked with a wonderful fellows uh, from Asia. Then, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, now I, my journey has uh, reached the, the pre present. Uh, thank you for listening for <laughs> uh, so long. Uh, my message to you, oh, oh sorry. Yeah, my message, oh, sorry. <laughs> I, one more message, it's a quick, okay. So my uh, message to you through my talks is uh, that when you study architecture, uh, you don't have to focus on only one thing at one place. Uh, just remember why you wanted to study architecture uh, in the first place. Uh, it's, it's your strong axis. Uh, so you can go anywhere and uh, meet anyone and uh, can get any experience. Uh, in my case, you remember my starting point is how can I connect people and the architecture. Uh, for me, designing exhibition and renovation with the memory of carpentry works, uh, education and the international convention uh, activities are all connected uh, to that. Uh, so last thing, uh, architecture is a very special uh, specialized profession that uh, often required hard training training and the works, but the please don't leave your family and your health, your friend, uh, and the, the joy of your life time. So, and then so the study of architecture will bring uh, great happiness and the many friends from all over the world into your life. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Miss Yukito. Um, I couldn't track on the time, but you know we slightly went uh, beyond the 30 minutes threshold because I was blown away with all this presentation. Uh, it's been a while since I saw, you know, and I, I think like it's a reminder to architects, yeah, uh, we act almost like a horizontal integration, connecting multiple disciplines to produce something that, you know, uh, tangible and in doing so we adopt design thinking that can connect with other perspectives uh, i was also struck by several examples especially the uh, snail house mr snail yeah it was uh, conceptually it was kind of related to our challenge uh, because i'm not quite familiar with japan but here you know we encounter this housing affordability issue housing provision and those kind of a uh, ideas might be applicable not only to Japan, in Japan, but also in other Asian countries, particularly places that are experiencing high growth like Indonesia. I think we will need to uh, hold 
you know our burning questions for the uh, last session after all the presenters have presented their works. If it, uh, okay, so you know, uh, please jot down, put on your note if you have any questions to Miss Yukito, and you can raise that question, those questions later on after all presenters have presented their uh, slide deck. With that, run of applause to Miss Yukito. Thank you so much. While we are uh, preparing for the logistics, I also would like to invite our next uh, speaker, Pak Rida Razak. Uh, so I also would like to, again, uh, use my note, but it again might not necessarily be a complete document, a complete presentation of Pa Rida's accomplishment, right? As you can see, a CV resume is a deceptive document because you cannot tell entirely about the person works. So I'd like to be uh, brief here. Uh, pa Rida, Rida uh, Razak, he is a transdisciplinary creativist with 20 years experience. He is director at APRAS Architect, ARN Consulting Training, Citizens Lab, Citizen Plus Meta Developer, Pentas Blockchain School, Rumah Tangsi. I can go on and on, yeah, but I just couldn't imagine how he structured the schedule of his daily life, yeah, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, Pak Riza, uh, sorry, Pak Rida uh, went through his bachelor's degree in architecture from RMIT in Melbourne and then went on to uh, help appointment, teaching and research appointment in several uh, part of the world, in Vienna, and also he mentioned that he was also in uh, Houston, Yuki was also in New York, I was in Atlanta, so maybe we have that US connection, yeah? And now we are here in Yogyakarta, so such a pleasure. Uh, well, without further ado, Pa Rida, the stage and time is yours, please. <laughs> Was that? Oh, okay. Would you like me to go to the stage with you? As I said, duo. Arsitek Universitas Gajah Mada. Ya? Harap sehat sejahtera. Berhadap saya kongsi cerita, cerita heritage, peace making untuk semua. Sudah bangun tak? Sudah bangun? Uh, terus bangun ya. Mau bangun sama aku? Tak ada, belum lagi nanti ya. So today, I will be sharing a very interesting topic. Little bit different from Miss Yuki. She talks about her journey and architecture and doing micro architecture. But... My journey is a little bit different. I did a lot of architecture, and then now I'm going through a new journey, going to Warisan, Bangunan Warisan, and how to activate Bangunan Warisan. Empowering, my vision is empowering culture, heritage for the future through adaptive reuse and heritage space making. Aku juga tahu semalam, some of you guys have studio work doing governor's office, ya? Yeah? Terus satu hari di Gain Joshua, dan juga Gladys. Siapa dari sama kelas sama dia? Ah, rame ya. Yeah. Good. Same class, huh? Let me about myself. I'm a transdisciplinary architect. In many, I'm an architect, green building, also educator, trainer bersama Pak Adrianta selama 12 tahun, government researcher for the World Bank, and then creative community planner, FB content writer, heritage asset director, dan macam-macam. Bersama banyak persatuan, arsitek, planner, engineer, ID, dan macam-macam. Dan over the years, I already set up multiple companies from architecture to creative agency doing SOCMED for companies, training director for heritage assets, and 
Recently, I have a new fetish doing blockchain, NFT, and metaverse. Yeah. Quite interesting. This is not my first time in Jakarta, uh, in Indonesia. Last year, I went to five times to Jakarta. Last year, I was with Pak Gita Wiryawan. Do you know Pak Gita? Do you know how hard to get meeting with him? Very, very difficult. But now Pak Gita is in Stanford, teaching in Stanford. So I met Pak Gita and Pak Gita introduced me to Weir. One of the biggest VR company from Indonesia with five IP in Silicon Valley. Amazing. So from there, I got a lot of network from Indonesia. But I don't want to talk about Metaverse because I already talked at Armajaya. Today, I'm going to talk about heritage. This is my father and my mother and my sister and me 15 years ago. Masa, huh? Lepas graduasi, yeah? Established in 1985, my father director with me, took a mother and my uh, me and my sister. And then I have another two sisters, which is head of administration. And the other sister, her work is to finish all the money. Yeah. <laughs> and this is how my office looks like in Malaysia. Yeah. So my father always come to the office and then, hey, why are you still sleeping at home? Come to the office now. We have meeting. Yeah. And our office have done a lot of work for many years, from housing to, you know, laboratories to uh, a studio. And this is Wash Studio, one of our projects that we did, interior. And then subsequently, we become the owner of the studio, uh, washing clothes for students. Yeah. And then our project stadium. This I like to show this stadium project. Not because I like to do the stadium project. Masa tahun 2005, 2005, there was reformasi. So these are all politics gathering in the stadium. Crazy, yeah? Against the government. <laughs> so my stadium, the stadium where we designed, was not used for stadium. It used for political meeting. 200,000 people came. Capacity of stadium, only 30,000. <laughs> Subsequently, during pandemic, we finished a lot of projects. Balai, Bomba, and then recently, new housing. This is quite interesting project. We did a resort, yeah, and then also uh, interior for some of my friends. And last year, we were, uh, last year we were working on a rugby stadium. Uh, now, in a, this project was very, very difficult. Because, not because the structure is very simple. It's just a small building. Because of the wetland, I have to comply with the wetland requirement. I cannot do this. I cannot punch through wet, uh, the waste system, electrical system and everything. And, and then you know, now it's st uh, slowly, we are trying to find another land because the land was too expensive to do. But criticizing myself, you know, this is business cycle. Eh? When you graduate later on, right, you will work. And then from there, you will experience with the companies. And then from there, you open your companies. And like myself, I was so lucky because I work with my father already 20 years. And right now, my office is already at the stage of declining because already 30 years. You know, every office have a climax. Jadi, bila sampai climax itu, dia perlu go re-strategize, innovate, atau jatuh merudum sampai mati. Aku belum mau mati lagi. <laughs> I don't want to die. <laughs> but subsequently, I found Adrianta to revive myself. We did training together to educate students. And a few years ago, I set up this new company called Citizens Lab. Work with local government to do creative community planning. Not urban planning. Creative community planning. We bring shop mat, uh, everything that is to be digital, and uh, to part of the local government to activate with the people. And then recently, new companies for tech startup. And do you know about placemaking? Who knows about placemaking? I hope I can finish in 30 minutes. Who knows about placemaking? Tahu gak, Pak? Tahu? Tahu, placemaking. Placemaking itu apa? Making a place. Ah, making a place. Tahu? Tahu placemaking? Tahu placemaking? Tahu gak placemaking? Aku tahu engkau 
Sebenarnya tahu Piku menoleh Apa lagi? Iya yeah. Aku suka cakrahan loh Handsome gitu Ya yeah. Tapi semenjak gladis Kedal aku sama itu Yura ini tak aku sudah jatuh cinta. Wah. Okay, place making is about the facility that eventually revitalize urban, innovate strategies, and also act as a catalyst. This is very powerful for architect because most architect know how to do building, thing that they discuss with the people about what they need, but how do you activate the building? Ah, huh? there's many type of place making. You can study standard place making, strategic, creative, tactical. And as an architect, how can we be part of the place making? We need to start engaging place making at all levels. Like just now, Yuki was doing exhibition, engaging people, and then meeting people to get in content, and also start thinking about designing towards creating sustainable communities, economy, community driver, design people, design sustainability, design place not space. Aku lagi tak paham apa ini. And saja jadi tak. I just put inside my slide because it looks cool. But okay, aku juga seperti kamu. Aku when I was studying in Vienna, uh, my university is just around uh, this building. Mm. This building, this was one of the first heritage building in Vienna that I visited, called the Gasometer Simmering. At that time, it was under construction. Very interesting. The Indonesian community here is very strong. I learned a lot from them at the Indonesian embassy. And what it is is actually the old building they combine with a new building to become a change of use between temporal and permanent. This inspire me a lot in terms of current architecture and relation of place making and heritage. There's a lot you can go to YouTube and find all this, and then the books, and then the research. Not many research, but this is some area that you can actually look into. And how can heritage place making building be part of heritage be part of place making? Selalunya, be selalunya, traditionally government led conservation they will conserve, and then private led the adaptive reuse, right? Government through heritage, then someone will come in, but the building will be boring, right? It will be either office or be a little bit shops, and subsequently the business not working because the government tourism is not, you know. And then lacking of community participation, we also don't have sense of relation, executive single use, outdoor place making only. So these are things that we need to relook. And as an architect, new trends, community wants to be part of the heritage. So architect, we have to bring the community to design together with us, activate holistically, mix use accommodation, flexible activities, so that we can do more things and new models, smart partnership. So I'm not talking about architecture today. I'm talking as a building manager. But what I did for the building that activate, and heritage building place making now there's a lot of trends, public private collaborations. I like this project battery. He was an architect in Johor, you know. Then uh, whenever I see him, he reminds me of Pak Ridwan. Yeah, but Pak Ridwan menang election. My friend lost the last election, <laughs> so we don't have an, another Pak Ridwan in Malaysia. But also I like this Japanese project where. Emikako, we visited this eh, when we were in Japan. Yeah. What's the name? I forgot. Capsule Tower. <laughs> Cannot forget. Huh? This is like legend. But because they already dismantled, then they sell it and anyone, any people, anyone can buy it and put in their place, country. And new place making, digital place making is also coming. VR, heritage gamification, virtual metaverse. If you have the chance, you go online. You can see some of my lectures in metaverse. Quite a lot of things interesting, and one of the other part that I interested was UK. How UK actually have not U UK? You know UK? Not UK, you know? Uh, okay. So they have hundred forty two thousand listed building that is gazetted under the government, and from there I started study the use of the building, retail, food, creative, to expand in terms of short term use and. Long term use because this is very important when I want to start taking new heritage building to activate as a place making. And after that, I because I was serving local government so long for five six years, everything digital boring. So I start to look at the heritage building in Kuala Lumpur, and I start to study everything, and I start to apply to the mayor. Say, mayor, I want to take one building. 
please. So my first application, I did the report. I sent to the mayor. Mayor said, no, you are community, not NGO. So you cannot take it. So I said, okay, no problem. So I applied other buildings. I think applied buildings, about 10 buildings in Kuala Lumpur. Didn't get. Then in 2019, I got a call from the mayor. Told me, hey, Rida, please come and bring your team to come and take over this building. Amazing, right? And the best part, when I got this building, I said, oh my God, this was the institute, architect institute for 24 years. Then after that, architect institute moved out of the building. I said, wow. So I remember during that time, I got a call. Then after that, I go to the president of architect Malaysia. Hey, you know, the heritage build, our old heritage building is coming back to the architect. Ah, so that was amazing. And a little bit of history about the building. In 1974, it was constructed by a famous merchant and then become the HQ for the architects of Malaysia for, since 1974-2013. And in 2014, the government decided to take back and restore to become a clubhouse for the government, which nobody actually had come and subsequently gave concession to me in 2019. And this was the process of restoration from white color you know, they had to, you know, restoration, you need, you need to build the roof in order to uh, repair the original roof. And then they found a lot of interesting things. And now after completion, it's become very beautiful. So what I gathered from the process of redoing the refurbishment restoration was the space planning was very important. Because when you want to do restoration, which period do you want to bring the building to? Is it during the period of the original owner? Or is it because one of the use was hotel? Is it during the hotel or what? But we decided this building will be a place making for public. We're not doing outside. We're doing inside the building. So we decided open planning. And then with the scraping, we found a lot of things, heritage documentation, the roof construction. So it was quite interesting. The roof construction, we couldn't find the original roof. So we, I went to a very old school. So I went to my old school together with my friends. And together with the architect, and we took the building that is going to be demolished in my old school to this place. Elementary school, junior high school? High school, high school, yeah, high school, yeah. And then internal restoration, and then external infra. So many stories lah. Banyak hantu dalam bangunan ni. Masa konstruksi ada pontianak datang. Ketuk pintu, hello. There was a lot of ghosts. You know, Mikako? In Japan got a lot of ghosts. But here also a lot of ghosts. Yeah. So, in essence, when you do heritage, you have to understand. Okay. There's a process cycle. Eh? Asset intervention, building registration, design, design stage, determining intervention, and then sampai konstruksi. This is the hard part to get, to get uh, people condone about the project. And then the construction. And then after that, head over. And then this is another hard part, which is to activate the building and also to maintain the building and make it inclusive. Huh? So how can architect be part of this? I got to tell you. So when I got the building, the first thing I strategize, heritage management, design. So, so you think that you only have to design draw by drawings. I have to design a lot of documents. Dan macam thesis, Pak. Patutnya antar ke university sudah dapat PhD dah. Yeah? I have to design the objective policy, sustainable business model, because government didn't give me single money. Government asked for me money to pay. <laughs> this is that they bagi concession, they ask me rental payment. And then maintenance strategy, content outreach, collaboration, adaptive change. Yeah? So when you look at buildings, heritage building, there are three types of use. One is full public use, which is by the government. Always same thing. Tourist, gallery, government office, education, religious, center, community. But when you look at full commercial, Full commercial, meaning public, private start to do, office, retail, education, events, restaurant, hotel, healthcare. But my position was a bit different because I have understanding with the government. So we have to work together. Oh, ooh, sudah tutup. Eh, macam mana? Habis. Bisa? <laughs> Ken? All right. And then I have to collaborate with the government and create a lot of potential mutual solutions. 
Ayo, apa jadi? Sudah habis. Alright. Maybe I take 45 minutes. Nah, laju sedikit. Oke, oke, oke. Ya. Ah, sampai ke mana sudah? Sudah lupa. Ah, yes. And then from there I started designing place making frameworks. This is what you need to do when you do for your studios. Start thinking about the bigger picture in terms of like my client was local government. I have a lot of legal parameters. And then the place making initiative, I don't want only want to do physical. I want to do digital. So I plan everything and also the hybrid planning. I will show you in the pictures later on and heritage partnership goals. And when I took the building, I told myself, what, can, what I want to do with the building? Say, I'm going to make it inclusive. Rich people can use, but only one week, two weeks. This is true because I got called from Netflix America. They want to do a movie in the building for six months. I said, no. They want to pay me half a million dollars. I said, no, because this is for people, you know? And then work together to create this innovative project as the first guaranteed heritage event space in the world. So I had, with this, I need to actually work together with a lot of people, uh, the government and architect, planner, lawyer, conservator, tour guides to activate the building. Wah, kak bisa. Ah. And then this one, when I come in, started doing the model, business model, which is the module for the SDG. My main aim was heritage modernization, cultural lifestyle, local promotion, tourism entertainment. So this will reflect in terms of the activities. And in terms of the framework itself, we have to design the vision to, to comply to the heritage, create new digital applications, and also physical events. Then this is Rumah Tangsi. Interesting. There's a main building, which is a, formerly the house, the parking, and then you have a, 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 not big, only about 15,000 square feet. But I did an event about 21,000 people in the building. Crazy, right? Huh. And the pursuit space after the refurbishment, all open space. So last time this, uh, apa ini? There's no uh, all the spaces was blocked. Now it's open. And one of the things that is very important as a heritage manager is that I'm, my client is local government, is that first one priority must ensure the local government identity. I cannot do any alcohol event. Difficult. Because profit margin for alcohol event is triple of what the normal things is. Because, you know, Muslim. And then, <laughs> and then after that, there's so many SOP. I can't even put a nail in the building. I can't put picture, you know, difficult. And then uh, I have to comply with the conservator requirement. They always call me, Rida, you cannot do this, cannot do this. This one is cracking. This one is, this is your job, not my job. Huh. And then I have to control the uh, activities. So I create this. This is the only thing that I can do. Tapi in between, lagi pusing-pusing lagi. What other things? Then, so the management setup is quite interesting. So when I took the building in 2019, crazy, Pak. Crazy. Because pandemic. How do you take an event space during pandemic? Huh. While all my friends taking other businesses, all closed down. Tutup. Hmm. Shut down the business. So my business at the time was uh, three months mobilized and then pandemic. Pandemic. And then I was close, open, close, open, close, open, close, open. But I learned from the system until now I can open fully and created the structure for the business. This is quite interesting how you do transdisciplinary programming for your project where I have the creative directors, architect and lawyer, he planned the business plan and then heritage director, maintenance, repair, creative media, social media, tourism, art, food curator, event safety. And then also complying to the rules, parameters, Guidelines, operation, activities, what can do, what cannot do. All the guidelines I written. A lot of work, Mikaku. I wish you were helping me. <laughs> and also, I told you I cannot put any pins. So I created a procedure with the government that if I take this route, I can do faster. If I take the other route, I will go through you. So that makes a lot of activities easier. Like one example was trying to do a theater. The Macau, Macau government came. They want to do a theater, but we had to call an engineer to do the structural integrity test to see whether we can do the set 
but cannot do, then I say cannot do. And a lot of challenges in the management. Eh? Leaking. Oh, bangunan leaking tiap, 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 tiap bulan. How as architect, okay, just now Mika, uh, you, Yuki, paint the building. I have to repair leaking every month. Yeah. And I have to generate the income to repair the leaking. That's hard. Yeah. And then the pandemic issues, the end users, the management, so many things. Sometimes exhibition problem. Two things problem exhibition. The young ones like to do naked exhibition and also LGBT exhibition. And I always get in trouble with the government. Really? Serious, Pak? Yeah. And then public lands, macam macam. And also constant repair. And that's boring, huh? That's the boring part. But the fun part is actually designing the activities. So from there, I took the building. I started thinking with my team. How do you activate in terms of promotions? I started the first thing to do the space deck, heritage space deck. We started doing comic, uh, sending to all the public. And then upgrading the Facebook, web, IG, LinkedIn. And then somehow got into the Malaysian Airlines book. And I don't know, they had this, this you know this guy? Joseph Gordon-Levitt? You know him? He's an actor. 10 things I hate about you. Long time ago. So he has tweeted about the building. Because he had a yellow challenge in America. So suddenly, eh, suddenly he became famous in America. And then uh, we started doing a lot of other things. Eh? And the challenging part is that when became a building manager, I'm supposed to generate the income, but I have many universities coming every month to study the building and they want to learn how to manage the building. So I have the USI, UTM, IUKL, Malaysian, many, many from different faculty, not only architecture, engineering sometimes, uh, QS, quantity surveyor, events, tourism, many. But I'm, so, I'm sorry, uh, th three more minutes, yeah? Ha? Banyak lagi ni. Yeah. All right. Okay, public engagement. <laughs> A lot of public engagement, politician engagement, celebrity engagement. Tahu tak ini? Siti Nur Aliza kenal? Okay, okay lah. Aku letak gambar lagi semua yang artis yang wanita aja. Only girls, beautiful one. This one is like uh, BCL of Malaysia. And you are the late Akra. No, no, no. No. She married my architecture student. Oh. Crazy, yeah? yeah. By the way, I went to Ashraf to uh, Kuburan. Ah. She's he's my friend. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> and then a lot of collaborations. We empower. What we did was empowering the community through many things. And then also, we did a lot of market, Chinese market, everything. For this, this all is a process of designing. And also a lot of more markets. This one was quite interesting. We we. Okay, usually like traditional local food is cheap, right? So we did a like a high end dinner, yeah? fine dining. The ta the the table is one thousand per table. Yeah, many things, and then also a lot of exhibitions. Also prayer, prayer. And then we did a lot of music videos in the building. Yes. This one, huh? So I work with City to do this. Two thousand nineteen open. Huh? Open three years ago, yeah. Yeah. And then already have this all activities, right? Everything. Okay. And then now I'm at the stage of integrating digitalization to the heritage. I work with KL Fashion Week. All the fashion designers doesn't have work. Cannot do uh, fashion shows. So they work with me to do digital exhibition. So all the uh, models come and then they uh, we curate it. And then after that, online. And then also we work with Levi's. We do the digital concert. KL Fashion Week is quite interesting because the uh, KL Fashion Weekend that time, they actually collaborate with... Uh, Jimmy Chu, uh, famous shoe designer. So we actually did a KL Fashion Weekend. The fashion show was at the physical. The archiving of the fashion is on the building. Then this was example of the metaverse that we did. Quite interesting. Yeah. Then this is the fashion show and the physical. 
and then this was the exhibition in the physical also we work with some artists doing sculpting for 3d and then also projection mapping with artists so many names so some of your design can put on the building facade yeah and also with, with a lot of other things last year uh, last two months i worked with tiktok so we did the tiktok exhibition and also other things and then our achievement now we are not so many 11000 followers in instagram but we are number 3 in kl yeah 170 events during pandemic 60000 visitors collaborations sdg we are already complying a lot of things and i submitted for two awards planning awards of the year uh, planning awards and also the property awards uh, and place making so we won one go uh, to a uh, first place for all except for place making we got number 2 and then now currently i've been called by other heritage buildings like stadium merdeka and then also old uh, odeon uh, cinema and also another one is uh, uh, palace they want me to see how to activate similar to this and in conclusion there are four tips to activate a heritage space number one is you have to think about the sustainable model not only when you architect you design the building but also thinking about the what future the sustainable models number two is the sustainable asset and financial management what will they do number three is creative public advoc advocacy collaborations and also thinking about transdisciplinary executions tak sempat ini video lama sangat ya tapi i just want to show the first part which is the building how it looks like Okay. Just want to show you the building how it looks like, yeah. So you can actually work with creating heritage spaces, think about the future, thinking about the space planning, what could it be in the future with the client, how it can be activated, and you can give life to the building. And with that, right, so you can see that it could be not only for the use of specific people, but it can be used for inclusive for everyone, from children to adult to the, to the seniors and many things. And this is true because 80% of my visitors are ladies below 30, 20 to 30. The usage. So I already turned the heritage use to become a use for the youth. All right, with that, thank you very much. Barang yang lama dikenang dibuka, jangan tertinggal berinovasi sentiasa. Harta negara arsitek berkarya bakal menjadi katalis sejarah warisan negara. Thank you very much. Fantastic. All right, Paridel. Fabulous, fabulous. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, I think it also further underline the importance of architect as again, uh, you know, thinking in an explanatory way, yeah, like what Yuki has mentioned earlier, how she also explore a bunch of other things and uh, Parida also so as tangibly, you know, the Rumah Tangsi project in particular, which again, um, something that inspired me and I believe inspired all of you. And so it can be something that you can further discuss with uh, Parida in other occasions. Uh, again, without, you know, I'm a bit conscious of time, so I would like to invite the next speaker, uh, Ms. Mikako Oshima. Ms. Mikako, please uh, have a seat. Oh, sorry. And just to a brief introduction to Ms. Uh, Mikako's profile, uh, I have it here. Uh, Ms. Mikako Oshima, architect, all EED, AP, BD plus C, W E L L A P. Oh, and she is based in Japan in a practice company called Nihon Seke Incorporated. Yeah. And uh, Ms. Mikako is a senior architect at Nihon Seke, one of the leading architect firms in Japan and to some extent worldwide. Yeah. Uh, she also has work experience uh, back in the US at SOM, also another esteemed reputable uh, firm, Skidmore, Owings, and Muriel. 
at New York City office and still live also in New York and Paris at some time before moving to Tokyo. So Ms. Mikako's achievement is working as an architect has covered a wide variety of projects throughout the US, Europe, Middle East, Asia, and Japan, and perhaps Indonesia for the coming years, yeah. <laughs> uh, through a wide variety of uh, typologies, including local government assembly hall, commercial, mixed use, transportation, hospitality, stadium, and education facilities. And her work has also been uh, received numerous awards and recognitions, and she has been a design critic for architecture schools and given speeches and lectures at universities and other forums worldwide. Again, uh, so glad to have Ms. Mikako here. Time and stage is yours. Thank you. Hi. So now you know how to do the exhibitions and now how to how you know how to do the building management. So now let's go back to a little bit more architecture. Okay. <laughs> so today I didn't know what to talk about because it's the first time for me to speak in front of you guys. So I was thinking maybe I can talk about a little bit of sustainability or maybe a little bit about what earthquake or more design. But maybe let's, it's better to talk about a little bit more like you are familiar with and it's something that I would like to you guys to learn something from today. And today I wanna talk about three things. Only three things you could remember from the, my lecture today. That would be my pleasure. One thing about our office called Nihon Seke. And the second thing is about Tokyo. And then third thing is the project that I'm working on. And it, I, I, hopefully this in, inspires your project. Okay. So our office, we started from 1967 uh, with 40 people uh, got independent from one of the firms. And usually you will call someone, you know, like Tadao Ando, Akenzo Tange, that you have a master of architect, no? And our office didn't start from like that. Put the microphone a bit closer to... My things, like me. Can you hear? Sorry. And so back then, it was uh, Japanese economy is growing up. So these 40 people got in, independent uh, to aim that for new um, architecture in the new age, we had to have a new type of office. So we have no like master, like, you know, master architect, but one of us, each one of us is the Nihon Seke. Nihon means Japan, if you know some of the Japanese word. And second mean design, so architecture design. Uh, our office covers uh, every single discipline of uh, you can think of in architecture vision, starting from architecture to engineering section to landscape, urban design, innovation, uh, construction administration to cost management, very important now and project management and value engineering. So basically, once you knock our door, I can complete the project. So our achievement goes uh, worldwide. Uh, mainly in Japan, we have five offices in, in, inside of Japan, uh, headquarters in Tokyo. And we have also another office uh, in Shanghai uh, covering all the Chinese project. We used to have an office in Jakarta as well, but due to the pandemic, we closed the office temporarily. Hopefully we're gonna open again soon. And we also had uh, one in, in Vietnam. Uh, I'll show you a couple of uh, projects that uh, we worked on. Let me go this side. Uh, this is uh, one of the, the tourist building in Tokyo right now. Our office is uh, inside of this building. She visited uh, one week ago, <laughs> actually. We just moved to this building. Uh, we also work for major Japanese uh, companies, called, uh, uh, for example, Nissan, Toyota, Panasonic, and all these companies. Uh, also, we have a lot of big projects in China. This is recently completed in China. It's a cultural exchange center. Uh, some schools, uh, this is from the schools uh, near Tokyo. And we also worked on the University of Indonesia project. This was uh, with also with JICA's funding. Uh, some schools, uh, again, the elementary schools and college. And this project in Tokyo, we worked with Kengo Kuma. And Kengo Kuma used to be uh, working at our office when he was young. A little bit more museum. Um, as a Japanese architect, we have worked on the cartoon museum in Ishinomori near Sendai. And if you are the big Ghibli fans, we did a museum in Tokyo, a very small museum uh, in the Studio Ghibli Museum. 
Also, we worked with Kisho Kurokawa uh, with um, um, National Art Center in Tokyo. And now, if you are even more big Ghibli fans, we did the Ghibli Park completed this year. So next time you go to Japan, please go and check it. It's inside. Uh, more project. Uh, this is the aquarium uh, only with the jellyfish. Beautiful project. Another cultural center in north of uh, Tokyo. Also some sports facilities. Uh, this is the dome uh, we did finish in 2002. Uh, in uh, south of Japan. And this one, the Musashi no Mori uh, Sports Center, is what's the um, uh, Olympic 2022 and uh, 2020 uh, badminton uh, match was uh, held here. As a Japanese architect, we, we can work on also some project about onsen. Hope you can go there. So now, 2023. What is happening in Tokyo now? Uh, how many people have you been in Tokyo? Tokyo, Japan? Okay, you guys have to go. <laughs> Next trip, professor, let's go to Tokyo, okay? So now, you think that Tokyo is already done, you know? But now the, this much of project is going on. And some of the projects we are working on, this is uh, where our office is. I just saw that this is Tranomon Hills. And this area it has been redeveloped again. This is done by uh, OMA. This is going to be completed this year. Uh, another big project. Maybe you have seen the images of this project on Instagram or Facebook. It's uh, we are working with the Hezawik, also PCPD, uh, PCPA, and this kind of people. And this is one of the biggest projects we are working now. And this tall building is going to be tallest uh, in Japan um, in a short time. This is going to be completed this year as well. Another big project is in Shinagawa area. Uh, we're going to have a new uh, um, linear motor car train. And now uh, Tokyo Nagoya it takes about half an hour, uh, one hour and a half. But it's going to be, um, um, uh, it, when it's completed, it's going to be uh, 40 minutes. It's very fast. So the, the uh, blue one, is the current Shinkansen line, but then the orange one is the new one. And this is going to be completed in 2027, I believe. And we are also working on the, this huge area of Tokyo development. And first, we're going to have uh, these uh, four buildings. Then another three buildings is going to come up. And this is the station that completed 2019 or 20, I think, uh, done by Kengo Kuma as well. Uh, Nihonbashi area, if you know the um, Imperial Palace, it's behind of that. And Tokyo Station is recently uh, renovated as original uh, style. So this much yellow building is going to be um, uh, renewed. And the red marked one is the one that we are working on or we worked on. This one was the one with the newest completion in front of Tokyo Station. This is a Tokyo Station done by Nikken Seke. Don't confuse with that. <laughs> so, uh, Nihonbashi, yesterday, she took me to zero, kilome zero point, zero kilometer point. It's a similar one. This is the, our zero point of Tokyo. It's Nihonbashi. So, in the Edo period, in the 18th century, it was looking like this. And this is after the um, Meiji uh, period. So, you see there are a lot of modern buildings coming up. This is the Nihonbashi Bridge. Bashi means bridge. So Nihon Bashi means Japan bridge. Is the our point zero? This is the uh, one of the, the drawing from uh, Edo period. This is the original Mitsukoshi market, and then now Mitsukoshi department store. If you have been there, it's the uh, it's still there. So still our fabric of the city hasn't changed from Edo period. In the 1960s, early um, uh, 1960s, we hosted Olymp first Olympic 2000, uh, no, uh, 1964. So to receive all these um, uh, guests from all over the world, we had to quickly build the um, city fabrics. So those uh, highways were uh, constructed in like within the three years or so. So back then the river 
was very dirty. So we put all the dirty thing on the river. So why don't we put the highway on the top of it? But now the river is getting cleaner because we are uh, trying to improve the environment. So this is a crazy, crazy project. Uh, we are also part, uh, part of it. So now the river is clean, uh, but highway is ugly now. So we gonna uh, relocate the highway under the river and then the, create the water friendly environment. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> So in the future, you come to Tokyo, you're going to have this nice uh, boardwalk uh, along the river. Maybe it could be like Singapore. Hopefully, this uh, uh, moves, moves uh, faster than we think. So Tokyo. So what do you know about Tokyo? Compared to Hong Kong and New York, let's see the, some of the chart. So you know the, how big is the Tokyo is. So the, this yellow part is the Tokyo, Tokyo. And just compare with Manhattan, New York, where I used to live as well. It's like this size of the difference. But actually, New York contains five boroughs. Uh, New York, Brooklyn, uh, Queens, uh, Staten Island, and Long Island City. So more or less the size of the five boroughs uh, equal to Tokyo, Tokyo. Just to get more familiar idea, compared to Singapore, it's like this much. But in fact, uh, Tokyo's uh, economic uh, area covers um, 70 kilometers by 60 kilometers. So we call it the Moares like Greater Tokyo. So you can imagine like how big it is. So this is the global index, uh, global power city index uh, done by the Mori Institute. And comparing all these uh, index uh, in the different categories, starting from economies, uh, R&D, cultural uh, interactions, uh, liability, environment, and accessibility. And you can go through these uh, small points, uh, for example, like how much uh, um, tourism resource you have or cultural facility you have, academic resources uh, or uh, transportations. And so they did all this point and then they created that index uh, showing the, the hexagons. So this is the um, result coming from 2021 during the pandemic. So finally, Tokyo was ranked number three in the world. Uh, we were never in the top chart, but uh, because of the pandemic situation, people started looking at a different aspect. So the, one of the biggest things that we improved was um, um, accessibility, also the liability, because uh, relatively our city, cities are quite safe, and then the sanitary condition was better. And also one of the um, unique aspect was the different type of working environment. Instead of going to the uh, office, now you, you can work in the home, work at home or using the sharing office. And this was the biggest point that they improved part. Okay, populations. So compared to all this city in the greater area of Tokyo, it's ranked in number one. We have uh, 30 million people um, living in the greater of Tokyo. No wonder Sibuya Crossing is so popular and so crowded. So Tokyo, uh, we have been devastated uh, a couple of times in the past. This is the uh, image showing the fire, great fire in, in 1657. Back then, the, most of the buildings were built with the paper and the wood. So it was very easy to burn. So every time when they have a fire, they try to improve the city planning, how you can uh, protect from the fire and things like this. Back then, the, the Tokyo's population was already uh, one of the uh, biggest cities in the world. But uh, te about 10% of population died because of the fire. And then the 60 to 70 percent of the city was destroyed. And skipping to 1923, this is the Great Kanto after the Great Kanto earthquake, uh, devastated Tokyo again. Uh, the size of the earthquake was magnitude 7.9. It was quite big. And Three, uh, two thirds of the building was destroyed, not because of the earthquake, but because of the fire again. 
and maybe the, um, the, this was the image. Some of the uh, stronger structure uh, was left, but most of them are completely flat. Uh, another one is 1945, uh, after the World War II. Uh, again, Tokyo was devastated uh, quite bad. Another photo showing, this is the Sumida River. It's still the same fabric of Tokyo. So after that, uh, we had to quickly recover um, the city. And this is how it is now. We are still missing uh, some of the building. This photo was taken in 2018, I think. So after the World, uh, World War II, uh, the government or city of Tokyo uh, planned this uh, eight ring road concept. So they're creating like eight uh, um, uh, road uh, connecting from one area to another. And this is showing the old map of Tokyo. Again, where the river is, is the one that currently we have the uh, old road. But the, this ring road concept was uh, brought uh, in, 2000, in 1946, right after the World War II. And the original concept was a uh, hundred meter wide, uh, seven lanes uh, of uh, 80 meter wide lane. Um, also there's some green belt dome was um, uh, planned. This is uh, mainly like we are um, using the same idea about Washington DC. But as uh, we lost the war, uh, we had no money. So this um, um, master plan was never completed. So then 2000, uh, 1958, uh, they improved uh, this master plan from a 100 meter road to uh, shrink into two, uh, 25 meter road. And only one uh, road in, in Ginza area was a 44 meter wide uh, street, but it, uh, except that uh, most of the street was 25 meter wide. Actually, the, this 25 meter is a very good size. I will uh, talk about that later, instead of having this uh, 100 meter big load, because that's easily divide the city part into two, but 25 meter is easy to walk around. So this was kind of like uh, luck uh, that we had, good luck we had. And then the, after that, uh, still this was uh, quite uh, uh, big to go uh, through. So after that, um, because of the lack of budget, limited area was developed, mainly with uh, private developers or private railway uh, companies. Uh, comparison with uh, another city, this is a show, uh, chart showing the comparison with, uh, in the world, uh, talking about subways and train uh, um, access. So Shanghai has the uh, uh, longest um, lines of the trains or subways, and Tokyo is ranking in number seven in terms of the legs, but uh, this is very important point. Uh, number of users per day, Tokyo is ranking at the uh, highest. So about 85% of the people in Tokyo use public transportations. And also the number of stops, it's the same area uh, of Shanghai, uh, the si same size of the area, Shanghai and Tokyo comparing uh, two cities. So within the 10 kilometers uh, wide, we have uh, 400, uh, 480 stops of uh, subway or transportation stops. And versus Shanghai in the same uh, areas, only have 190. So you can see the, how dense our public the transportation is. So this was the TV prog uh, Chinese TV prog prog program had a special um, um, program about uh, Tokyo, and then they call it the Tokyo's miracle. And cities like Sh uh, Shanghai, or maybe we can talk about Jakarta, or even the uh, Jakarta same, has a se heavy traffic issues now. Versus Tokyo was improved compared to 30 years ago. So the, how come, no? Tokyo has many people, 30, 30 million people live there, and like, how come that we improved the uh, the, these uh, traffic jams. The one reason is that, as I show you, the transportation station mesh is quite dense. So you can easily access to the subway or uh, trains, uh, stations. 
And like I said, um, most of people use uh, subways or tra trains. So 80% of people normally use the trains because it's faster and you don't you know, uh, have the issue of getting a taxi or anything versus uh, only 15% uses cars. And also another thing is the parking lot and car maintenance fee is very expensive. In the, one of the Tokyo's, uh, the, the area, it's, let's say in the Ginza area, the parking lot cost is uh, about $5 in, in every 12 minutes. So if you park the car for one hour, you have to pay like $30. How many uh, rupees? $30, 3,000 yen? Yeah, five, almost 500,000. 500,000 500, per hour for buy parking. It's crazy, no? <laughs> also, because as uh, our streets are very narrow, uh, limited parking street, uh, parking area, so not much of street parking. And then there's very strict rules. You get fines everywhere. So no one wants to get in trouble with the, the all these uh, fines, you know? So, uh, like I said, the, all this development uh, mainly was invested uh, by the private developers, not the government oriented. That's the biggest uh, difference from the other countries. So, private developer cannot wait for the government to, you know, set up all these uh, master plans. So they just do it. Because, this, I'm sorry if you have like five minutes more. I have like another like 20 minutes to talk about. <laughs> he was right, no? <laughs> so this is a map of showing Shanghai. And then this, the, as in the Shanghai area, the street is very wide. And then if you want to go to one to another, you have to take this one line. So it's very linear uh, access. Compared to uh, Tokyo, this is the like Nihonbashi Bridge area uh, point zero. It's the this is the how much station that we have. So instead of having one direction to another in the linear movement, it's uh, we can move in the area. So people are easy to walk. Uh, and then if you are here and you check uh, your Google map, where's the closest subway, you know? So wherever you go, like you have basically the subway station or a train station. And it's quite fun to walk uh, around the neighborhood. She was walking 20,000 steps every day when she was in Tokyo, and she never walked walk here. <laughs> this is a photo showing the Tokyo Tower going up in 1980, uh, 1958. So uh, Tokyo is uh, very easy to walk around. OK, I have uh, 10 minutes more. <laughs> This is the one of the project that I'm working on. This is area in uh, Nakano, which is the little bit west side of Shinjuku neighborhood. And so what is Nakano? It's very uh, nice, uh, easy to walk around uh, neighborhood. And first of all, scale is relatively smaller compared to in the center of the city. And also they have this nice charming area with nice restaurants and bars. Also, the, they have this uh, building called the Nakano Broadway. And if you are crazy about uh, anime or figures, you should go there next time you go. And so it's kind of like, we call it the crossing uh, between the present and the past. Also, the, some of the art installation going on, very famous uh, artist, um, Takashi Murakami, with is flower uh, artist. It's also have a gallery here. So there's a lot of artists, um, actors, uh, young comedians living in this neighborhood. Also, this is the very um, unique uh, aspect of Nakano is this arcade uh, shopping mall. It's full of people every day. And then the, the project that we're working on, this is the Nakano San Plaza Concert Hall. This is what's a mecca of Japanese pop, J-pop uh, um, uh, singers. So one thing that we started working on is the currently this is the the lead part is the our plot of the project. Currently you have this uh, concert hall with mixed use with a hotel and conference rooms, station here, uh, tax bureau's office, public uh, building, city hall, Nakano city hall building, also public uh, project, and then the sports center uh, is this. And then so uh, before starting, we had to clean up this area. 
Uh, also in Nakano or in, in Tokyo, we have a lot of redevelopment project going on. We say it in the once in the hundred years. So the entire city is uh, trying to relocate things or redevelop the area. It's not uh, just uh, the developer want to raise the property, but um, all the area of Tokyo, it's, you can compare the size scale of the cities, the small houses area to this big uh, public building area. It's, uh, it was diff very difficult to, to for the fire uh, trucks or uh, some emergency cars uh, couldn't get in. So one reason to do this is uh, they want to make a disaster safe neighborhood. Also, the, some of the building is very old, uh, done in the 70s or 80s. So we had to have a public uh, a seismic proof building. The another reason was the, they want to have a better um, neighborhood to so make a lot of open spaces. That will create uh, higher market values. And then also a lot of people want to live here. That in, uh, brings the population increase. And then eventually they get more taxes. Maybe that's what they really want. So first step uh, we had to do is relocations. So currently we had a gymnasium, that's also a public gymnasium owned by this uh, Nakano ward, had to move to the another area. That was the project that the first three we worked on, uh, completed in 2020. This is the area that we worked on, they had this uh, park owned by uh, Met the Tokyo Metropolitan Government, and this was owned by Nakano ward. So our project site was here. That's the sewage center that they also own. So this is the sports complex we finished in 2020. This was the training facility for the um, uh, table tennis, for the training facility. They didn't do a uh, competition, but there was the training facility for 2020 Olympics. And then the second one is currently we have a city hall in that area. So we, we first we relocated the gymnasium to the, the park, and now we're gonna relocate the city hall into the, that block. This is uh, completed in 2024, next year. It's the city hall. Usually city hall looks very like ordinary and have uh, this um, uh, offices in the, in, in the windows. So we didn't want it to do something more like fun to go there. So this was our design, looking like a little bit of sip. Uh, construction photos. This is uh, took. This photo was taken in February last month. Uh, so it's uh, all the beams are up, structure is up, and we're gonna start doing the facade. So now the city hall is relocated next year. So from um, this um, hall, I think. We're gonna start demolishing these current buildings. And also the, so we're gonna rebuild the concert hall and then the tax bureau's office is gonna go into our project. And so demolition start next year and this building is gonna be completed 2029. It's gonna take a long time. So currently you have this triangle building and then the, we're gonna work on the uh, new project. Uh, this is the uh, sort of plans uh, looking from the top. So concept of this project is the um, uh, culture driven city of Nakano and hundred years. So we had to think about the building last hundred years. So one of the city, I, like I said, uh, Nakano is very good, to, good place to walk around. You can explore the city very well. well. And then also we are use, uh, making this mixed use building with uh, well balanced functions. Then also, uh, I, like I said, the Nakano San Plaza Concert Hall is the uh, J-pop maker. So we had to expand this um, uh, heritage uh, into our project. Then the, also another thing is the green network. And then uh, we are uh, focusing on working on this, this podium design. Then of course, uh, nowadays we have to think about sustainability for the next hundred years. So this is a plan showing the project. Uh, this part of the tower is uh, gonna go 250 meters. Then the concert four in the north side. And instead of putting on uh, one project, stacking top of each other, like we have now, 
uh, we're gonna relocate the project in in the surface way. So it's a good place to walk around again. So biggest difference with Indonesia and Japan, or uh, maybe other cities as well. Maybe Malaysia could be the same. When I was working on the project in in Jakarta, uh, first presentation I remembered. And then we wanted to use this, uh, you know, uh, naturally that in our mentality that we want to have uh, these open spaces around the around the project. But first thing, our client said, put the gate, close the facility, put the one entrance, and close everything because of the safety or so security reason. But naturally, what we do uh, in our practice, we usually make the open space, make the place open. That's the first thing that we think about. So that I want to highlight this is the comparison between uh, Indonesia and Japan. So this is a section showing the how complex this building is. Uh, first, for, this is the train station, uh, some uh, parking lot in the basement, and uh, Desta told me that you cannot build anything underground in, in Jakarta, but we are allowed to build it. So we have a parking space in underground. Uh, retail space, uh, like supermarket or some food courts, uh, also big residential um, uh, function, and also the office in the top and the observation deck in the top. And you can see the Mount Fuji. And big concert hall, uh, maximum uh, 7,000 people that uh, can come to the concert. And behind that, we have the hotel. Um, this is from the um, rule that we have in Tokyo. Uh, they want to kind of like improve the city environment. So they have this kind of like um, um, agreement. If you um, provide some public space or something like uh, change the quality of the local um, uh, residence, you can get more points. So you can maximize the floor area ratios up to 1,000 meters. But uh, by law, by building code, uh, it only can go 600 uh, uh, percent. So this is the space that we are giving to the society. So the private developer has to invest uh, this much of space into the project, but instead they can go higher and uh, bigger. So this is the current uh, Nakano San Plaza building looking from the Shinjuku neighborhood to Nakano. And this photo like, was like quite an uh, impressive photo for me, like when I, we are doing a competition. So somehow we wanted to have uh, this legacy of the um, uh, this Sun Plaza triangles. So this was one of the idea. This was the image that we are working on, like how we're going to bring into this um, legacy into the building. So first idea was uh, having it here in the bottom, like we have it now. But the developer didn't like the have it the, the uh, disturbing the view of the residence. So we decided to put it in the top. So this is the one of the final rendering. So we can see the Mount Fuji. So this project, uh, there's a station here. And also we had to think about the view from the station. So something has to be iconic. Then also, like I said, we provided a lot of open space. I, we call it the plaza. This is the meeting plaza. That's the gathering plaza. And this is the plaza that the holds from the hotel guests. And then the, across the street is the city hall. So on the third floor of this project, it's all connected by uh, pedestrian decks. This is some of the project um, description. Uh, on the south side, we have a retail and a big uh, concert hall, and then lifestyle hotels. This is one of the study that uh, how we're gonna do the public space, uh, how to connect with the train station. We are like having a meeting like every week about this. It's taking so long. So this is kind of like that carpet to the concert hall. This is the where people gather in front of the station. Uh, thinking about the uh, connection with the neighborhood. Also, the, as I said, uh, Nakano's uh, neighborhood ha uh, has a smaller scale compared to the center. So having this big project, we want to break down this uh, scale of the project. So we kind of put this big canopy in the, the bottom of the building, try to kind of like match with the city scale. Uh, this is the, we call it the uh, culture intersection, uh, cr culture crossing. 
is the um, uh, atrium that connect uh, each buildings. Also, one thing that we wanted to bring idea is this forest idea. So Nakano already have uh, two parks, big parks called forest, uh, mori, it means uh, forest in Japanese. So we have this uh, Siki no Mori Park means four season uh, forest, let's say. Uh, Heiwa no Mori Park means like peace uh, forest. So like, why don't we bring sad forest into a project? So we call it the San Plaza uh, Forest Park. So we try to have this kind of step garden into the green roof. And then connecting each plaza into the rooftops. This is night view, and then also they how people get us during the concert event. Uh, again, the rendering from the um, train station to the project uh, uh, views. This also we have a, a bus terminals. You can see how big the project is looking uh, over the Nakano old uh, city areas. More renderings. This is the image of the, how the park is gonna be used uh, during the concert. Uh, more renderings, I can just go through. This is a view from the train, so you can kind of be excited when you go to the concert. This is it. So. As I know that you haven't gone to Tokyo, please come and visit us. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mikako. Right. Um, yeah, so I believe questions will be raised by the audience and I would like to say that, you know, during the ultimate session with all of us, yeah. But what struck me about Tokyo is like, I guess like the idea of Tokyo Miracle that Mikako mentioned, which might be somewhat unique, right? Because it seems like it didn't happen in other part of the world. And also the idea that Tokyo has been so advanced, but still continue to reinvent uh, itself. So look very much forward to the discussion with Mikako uh, later on during the uh, ultimate session. All right, uh, so our last but not least presenter, uh, speaker for today is Pa Ardianta, yeah. right? And I guess I will not, you know, dwell too much about his profile. Uh, I'm conscious of time. So please, Pa Adianta, have yeah. the stage and time is yours. Thank you. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Salam sejahtera. Future architects of Indonesia from University Gajah Mada. How are you? So I know I have to be rushed at 30 minutes. So can you please listen as an architect of future, yeah, of tomorrow? Can you just silent, listen? Please raise up your hand, left hand. Now, go, everyone. Show one finger. Okay, raise up your right hand with five fingers. Tinggi, tinggi. Listen. Try to clap with one finger now. Go. Listen. Listen, two fingers, three fingers, four fingers, five fingers. This is a symbol to become an architect. Yes, you can be a loner, but the most beautiful part, if we work as a team, together, everyone achieve more. So meaning, maksudnya kalau satu jari boleh bunyi ya? Tapi kurang. Tapi dua, besar sikit. Tapi kalau tiga, empat, lima, cuba tepuklah sekali, lima, lima tekan. This is a symbol we as an architect have worked as a team. And this is a round of applause to yourself that be proud that you study in University Gajah Mada. Four of us first time came to Yogyakarta. We are so proud and so honored to be here. Please give an applause to yourself to your lectures, and of course, the big round of applause to your alumni. Desta, please, please, Desta. Thank you, Desta. Thank you so much. And of course, um, thank you to Pak Denny, baru tiba tadi, uh, our deputy chairman. And then my name is architect Adrianta, moderator. Can you go back to the slide? 
Well, um, after all, you listen from architect Yuki, architect Mikako, from Japan, Japanese architecture experience, and also my partner here, my brother here, architect Rida. Well, I want to bring you on behalf of Acacia as a chairman of education, and also our institute, PAM, Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia, Malaysian Institute of Architects, just to share with you something like a symbol after you listen of Asian vision, listen to Yuki, Mikako, Rida, I may put myself in your shoes as a student. Life as an architect, <laughs> as you know that. Why do you want to become an architect? Is it because glamour? Popular? Oh, bikin wang banyak? Betul. This is you. As an architect, <laughs> people will look at us like a very ugly person. But don't worry, masih comel. Betul tak? It's still cute. It's still cute. Don't worry. But for, for the first year student, can I raise a first year student? Look at them. So fresh. Final year student? Is it you're going to be like this? Don't worry. It's still cute. But again, as life as a student architect, even life as an architect, this is our daily life. Yeah? Tidur pun cuma 2-3 jam. Kami semua empat pun 3-4 jam tadi tidur. Untuk prepare slide. Macam competition. 30 minutes by moderator. Yeah? But our life as an architect, you see as a student, look at your bed. Katil kamu bagaimana? Di siang hari? Di malam hari bagaimana? Betul? But everyone have to remember to become a designer as an architect, be always as a last action heroes. Betul tak? Studio work 24-7. Hari-hari. For your assignment, you just go to the class and then there's nobody declare that next week or next month is the exam. You are prepared now. No way. Tomorrow exam, we study tonight. Betul. But coffee is our favorite. You want to drink coffee like this? No way, man. You just keep calm. Do not sleep, architect. If not, you become a walking dead. And I can see a zombie's faces now. But architect is intelligent. We are funny, attractive, because we want to encourage you. This is what we spoke and discussed with Gladys and Joshua. Where are they? They are our volunteers. Architect should be versatile. Even though we eat, sleep, design, don't forget to solat. But this is our routine every day. What I'm trying to portray is we need to take care of our time. Time is always envious. Always envious. So please take care of your time. While us, in al insa nala fikhus, illa ladina amanu wa amilu solihat, wa tawa sawbil haq, di wa tawa sawbil sop. Why I'm trying to say to you this one? We need to become versatile. I don't ask you to become octopus. But believe it or not, in one time, you can think multiple ways. But the true life as an architect, this is what John Ruskin said. Tell me what you like and I will tell you what you are. Just be cool. Gain a positive energy. Set positive mindset. Because all this journey, evolution as an architect, what we really need is the patience. You're putting all your designs, ideas through your pen and also your bloody Mickey Mouse. You know, putting mouse on the screen. But again, you need to put on the paper. Architects need to draw. And we also as a dream maker to portray from our drawing and interpret it. And then you need to convince your clients or even convince your lecturers how to market your design, how to sell your design. Besides all our gadgets, with your skill, these those days. But again, you have to portray yourself that sometimes we watch uh, drama or movies, everybody wants to become an architect. If you watch movies, there's no such thing architect wearing a coat and tie went to the side and holding a plan, a plan, and talking about, oh, Tuan, 
This is building. That's only a movie. This is his movie. There's no such thing. Architect should be like go ground to the below. When to, I know, after you extract all your design from your paper, from your mind, and to make sure in skill one to one, the most important thing is when you build your design, safety and health. That's number one. Fit for purpose, and make sure the end user happy and healthy. Good design should follow these steps: concept, function, sketch, drawing, perspective. Sometimes it can be backwards. Sometimes, but I want to share with you what Steve Jobs said: the only way to do great work is to love what you do. So now ask yourself: Cuba tanya diri sendiri, adakah kamu cinta pada profesion kamu? Because important thing is you need a patient to move forward. That's architecture. Through my eyes as an architect. It's just a wake-up call. You need to begin your journey, start from today, and project yourself in the future to become the future Indonesians of architects. Always plan your work, work with your plan. Don't forget, my dear students, you need to strategize your movement. So you need to strategize your woman, and I would understand pain, sakit ya belajar arsitektur, sakit tak? Waduh, sakit. But pain is temporary, but the pride is forever. So architecture is a visual art. Why I try to give it to the floor so that you have to manifest yourself by putting what you study, the knowledge. The skill that you want to gain it is a personal brand of yourself, because if not, you're going to be a very typical architects, designers in Indonesia. But what so special about your brand as a personal? Everybody got idea, betul tak? Semua ada idea, yeah, semua ada idea, a lot. Who? Cerita sama profesor kamu, idea kamu ini 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 ini. But I want to ask you the basic fundamental about what is the difference between art and design. What sounds very similar, all right? Art and design, money. What is different between art and design? Ah, uh, design is about principles. When talking about the arts, it's about from your soul. Design is where science and art break even. This is the fundamental of architecture. If I want to say to all of you in this hall, including us, we semua ini seniman. Kita orang seni. We are artists, and don't forget, we also scientists. When I say scientists, we are problem solver. We are risk taker. We serve our architecture to people, to society. We helping people. This is fundamental about architecture. But don't forget all this while what you learn from this university, Gajah Mada, the principle of design. You learn about this, am I right? But once you put your elements into your designs, you have to put your soul as well. Bapa rasa kamu paham apa yang saya cuba sampaikan. Soul of your design. When talking about your soul of design, this is the one. From God through your mind and nerve running through your pen, draw on the paper and then putting in your software and make sure you print out your drawings, submit your drawings to local authorities and make sure you need to coordinate with the contractors, with the consultants, with the engineers and make sure to build your design in front of you, scale one to one and make sure the people are going to utilize your building, creating a smile. And happiness—that's the value of satisfaction. I have my 20 years experience, but today I choose my past experience, two projects, because of our moderator said 30 minutes. It's okay. Five minutes. Ah, five minutes. <laughs> well, okay. I let me declare to you before I start to talking about. I I want to put myself in your shoes. I was a student like you before. 
And my first year architecture, when I study, every semester break, semua orang cuti ya. Tapi saya tidak. I have a good mentor, a great mentor who guide me. Ask me to go to do volunteer. Knock the door. Every offices architect di Kuala Lumpur. Volunteer to work with them. And the boss said, you are a first year student. You do nothing. And I said, enggak apa, Pak. Saya mau dalam sistem ini. So my first job is, you know, looking on the production designer, clean up the rubbish bin, make a coffee for my first year. And after semester break, I get to know the system. And then when I did my internship, I don't need to do any interview because the office said, Adrenta, you know the office system. You're most welcome. And then after that, I've done my internship during semester break. I still volunteered to come to the work. And for sure, the boss will give you token, the honorium to pay. It's not for free, but they still appreciate. Can you imagine after I finished my bachelor's, finish my master, the office called me back and I worked with them as a designer, as a project architect, and up, I become one of the directors of this company. It begins with tears from below and going up there. Architect Rekabina, I never for forget my mentor. Today, I would like to, to share to you two projects, a competition projects. This is competition opened up by PAM, Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia. They asked us to design for this building, Academy of Science Malaysia. Many of architects participate in this competition. So my team and myself, we sit down, we enjoy to participate in this competition. We went to the site. Most of the people ask me, how you get your idea from the site? The energy from the site with the positive chi, with the positive energy, positive mindset, working as a team. When we went to the site, this is a site. Very hilly. And then there was existing building of this Academy of Science Malaysia. So we went to the site and from the site, after you do analysis, SWOT analysis, and then you, you observe the topography of the site, very hilly. And we begin with the, our modeling, the floor plans. This is the one how you create the space for people by separation of zoning. How to separate with public zoning, semi-private zoning, semi-private zoning to private zoning, interject with all the plans and interject with your soul of the design by putting my idea with my team is about symbiosis. How to create a science and nature to be together and then we extrude this, my first sketch from the site. And went back to the office, to the team, discuss, deliberate, argue. And then they come up with these ideas. It's about sustainable architecture. Loving nature. Minimize cutting trees. Minimize cutting slopes. And you put some innovation idea to this building. It's like a, an idea open up to the environment so that we can catch light and sun as the abstraction of a flower. And of course, we begin with the sections. I believe you need to do your section so that you know the separation of your planning and circulation. And we injection with the green building index information to this idea. 3D modeling, of course, everyone expert in 3D modeling. We experimental it. It's not about form follow function or function follow form, but we want to portray a function and form should be together. And after complete the design, try to testing how the shadow affects the sunrise orientation with some ideas of, because they want an iconic building. The requirements say they want the iconic building. And we did models. And I saw a student make models. And when you do models, you can feel your design by touch, smell, look, and 
when you study models, you can start to implement, learn what is lacking on your design. Can you imagine that the positive energy to your design and then start to explore how to make adaptation from the site photo to your modeling and then explore it from the site photo and putting your 3D on top of that and you can manifest and projection to your client how the buildings looks like. This is my favorite perspective. So we interject all these ideas. I don't want to go detail about, this is not a class. It's only architect's talk, but talking about to input green buildings and suit with the sustainable development goals is a very essential. Well, student, this is the most challenging part, how to do a presentation board. Am I right? You have a problem how to do presentation board. But this competition train us because the requirements request four bots only. So can you imagine, you've got a lot of information, but please take note. How to do presentation with the concept of three I. Number one I is about informative. The board have to be informative. Second I is about illustrative. The board have to be illustration. It's like talking without voices. The last I is about impressive. You need to make sure your body, your boards, your design, impressive, simple. So you can see my first board, explanation about concept, analysis, and then you have your killer perspective, not killing perspective, killer perspective with some sketch. Second board, you need to portray all your floor plans, your elevations. Continue with the third board. And the last board, you need to become impressive. This is not me now. <laughs> it was like 10 years ago. Well, Alhamdulillah, with the enjoyment, we won that competition. And <laughs> believe it or not, every architect in this lifetime looking for this magical moment, guess what? Satisfaction value. Can you imagine when you're winning this competition and appeared in front of cover of the magazine? And you went through to any bookshops and suddenly you say, oh, MG. Oh my gaga. Oh my gaga. A bit among other international magazines. And it's, don't you think that you feel like, yeah, a little bit proud, but it's satisfaction until you have your own fan. This is the second project because of the time. I will let you share to you my involvement with this project, with my team, Architect Rekha Bina. And I want to share with you, it's nothing impossible to do a collaboration, working as a team. So I managed to meet my friend from Rome, Italy, three of them, yeah? Biquadro Architect, back year 2010. There's no Zoom meeting, remember that? We only have a Skype. To prove to these competitors, we can collaborate with our international collaborator to participate in this competition. But for sure, I told to my team, winning or losing is not everything here. But we want to enjoy the expedition. So we involved this project. Limited participants, they select a few architects. So I was a young architect at that time, have to compete with the the most famous architect on that time. So this is a site to do a new faculty business and account to University Malaya in Kuala Lumpur. Have you heard University Malaya before? Go and browse. So when I start study with my team, we went to the site. Actually, they're talking, you know, this is very normal. Yeah, analysis, sunrise, sunset, the wind prevailing. And then you need to Make sure your design is responsive to the environment, the surrounding area. And then you need to study about the principles of elements. And this is the condition of the site. Imagine that. Have a look. Existing building, surrounding, and the parking area is the site. 
And Tan Sri Azmashin, one of the richest yeah, businessmen, he donated this project. Well, have a look. So we went to the site, filled the site. And to tell the truth, how you want to become unique for your design. So I was thinking to sit down with my team, how to make the element of USP. Write down, what is USP? Unique selling proposition. You need to come up with a very unique idea to sell your design, to participate in this competition. And I managed to find one of my connection. Who is this richest guy? He's Malay, but he's believed in Feng Shui. You know Feng Shui, the Chinese Feng Shui? And I start to come back to the office, sit down with my team, with the urban concept, with the bioclimatic system, and come up with the Feng Shui concept. So, I told to my team, let's enjoy this competition. It's not about winning or losing. We enjoy by talking about begin with an arts. Seni dulu. Kesenian dulu. So when we managed it, so we come up with these ideas, offices, classroom, because this building, they said in the requirements, the function and operation of this building for a master student of business and account. They were running this faculty 24 hours because the student is, is working part-time. So after we, we run through all the schedule of accommodation, the space to celebrate public and private spaces, <laughs> We want to create a unique classroom. It's not like a typical classroom with the flute and the you know, organic form. We list down all the list of the spaces and we start to make a modeling. And I discussed with my Italian friends from Rome, let's do form and function should be unity. Now we just play around with an arts. Because we, I told the team that let's make it this building breaking the monotonous 360s elevations and then it's like abstraction look like a flipping books. You know a flipping books? It's a breaking monotonous elevation. And then section is the most essential. Very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bila buat section, you know how to segregate your public spaces and private spaces. And then my Italian friends start to explore about the materials and lightings. We was so enjoy ourselves when participate in this competition. Now, we come out, we submit. The result came out. Only five finalists. Five finalists need to present to this Orang Kaya with the, all the team. So, obviously, I'm the last presenter. Because the first presenter was the famous architect. He took about one and a half hours to do his presentation. Second presentation took about one and 15 minutes. Third presentation, one hour. The fourth presentation, 45 minutes. And come to me as the last presenter, the organizer said, Pak Adrenta, kamu cuma ada 15 minutes saja. So what I'm trying to share with you, Always have a contingency plan. So I have four slides, four type of folders, and always choose the last folders for contingency plan. So what I did is, you have 15 minutes. You cannot say to the organizer, ini tidak adil, Pak. Orang lain dapat satu jam. Other people got one hour, one half. How come I got 15 minutes? It's okay. So I came to the room where they call it, okay, Pak Adrenta, kamu datang, wakil dari arkitek rekabina, and present the things. So how I present this client, now saya berlakon. You want to see how I present? Are you ready? Are you ready? Fasten your seatbelt. Okay. So they call me. All right. I came over with my team. My team putting this, our team, adjust. And you know the board of meeting room? You got 30 over board of directors. And this orang kaya sitting at the chair as a chairman. Very serious. Because they're very tired. Listen to four presenters just now. So this is a skill you need to improve. We can over. Assalamualaikum, Tuan. Apa kabar? 
So this is my presentation. You explain straight away. This is the site. Explain about the sites in a few seconds. This is the building your building looks like. This is from the site. And from this level, you can see your elevation. So explain about how to explain your concept. And then the best part is I selling my manifestation told to this client, Papa, kalau Papa ambil ini design, I promise you, I janji, this building will be an icon. In future, when people want to browse Google Earth, this building will be a symbol, an icon, looking like a, a hand facing kiblat. Goreng saja. But you need to sell your design, am I right? But I'm not sure I can do it or not. So this is the site, again, explain. See, the, the elevations, frontage, and this another side's angle, it will look like this. And then from the top, it will look like abstraction, hand facing Qiblat, and the elevation breaking the monotonous with the 360s abstraction with the eight walls about Feng Shui. And this guy was like, hmm. And then don't forget, I sell my design by saying that from this existing building, that's the entrance, stand in front of the resident, your building will look like this. Then, of course, at the interior, we injection of green building input. They have a curtain wall, water features, so that it can create a white sound. You know what white sounds mean? Make it very cooling. Shh, you know? And, of course, during at night, your building will look like a lantern. And the students, part-time, after work, they come over to use these facilities for 24 hours, and the building will look like a lantern. So may I present, because 15 minutes, ma. can you open the video? You need to do your animations. So after five minutes as the introduction, so you need to come in front and present in video. Are you ready the video? Aha, you see, this is my stuff. How we deal with that? Have to be ready. So let's uh, begin with the video. Right, this is the way how we present. Okay, the sound okay? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is Architect Adrenta. With my team, we collaborated with our friends from Italy, Ricardo Architects, to present to everyone and Papa about this project, a new faculty, Niagaan Dan Account, Business and Account Faculty. The beginning concept is like shaped by wind and water. The soul of the design inject into the feng shui elements of nature and designs we created with the orientation and breaking the monotonous. It looks like a 360s elevation, the abstraction of flipping books. And the buildings we accommodate Separation of public spaces, semi-private spaces, semi-private spaces, and private spaces, and portraying this iconic building with the abstractions of feng shui elements and a green building index projection of the design. We're creating a liquid and organic circulation with the eight curved walls and to begin with the green sustainable architecture, your students will understand the number eight wall symbolism. We inject nature to these spaces and the energy of the students to study business and account with the festive and enjoyment. Papa. Then one, one small. Yeah. We can promise you the buildings during at night will definitely look an icon, a lantern of this type. And this is the best platform to make this new faculty to become an icon for University of Malaya to the eye of Malaysia and also to the world. 
Go back to the slide. Go back to the slide. Goreng kena pandai dek. Kena jual. After my video presentation, everybody quiet. And the orang kaya tadi stand up and walk towards me. And I was so scared. Oh my God. He walked through and sit down in front of me and said to me, Adrianta, kamu boleh buat lagi sekali? He asked me to do another time for presentation. So when you second time presentation, the dialogue is different. You know? But end up, we won the competition on that day. Because orang kaya itu said that this is not architecture. When he turned back to the board writer, he said, this is not architecture. And my team and myself look at each other and said, okay, sudah kalah, enggak apa. But he said that this is the arts. So we, we, we so enjoy with our journey. And then we, you know, during construction, we learn from our consultant, with the contractors, working together and learn, you know, a lot of things. This is journey. As an architect, this is journey. And to tell the truth, the reality is the evolution from your design, the process from butter papers, from your 3D, from your drawings, come to the sides, to scale one to one, it will not be 100% perfect. No way. Yeah? So after completion, you know, when I, I told to my team with the contractors, we're running this practice with enjoyment. Even though we have argument, but with the positive energy movement, you see how, how different looks like the building. And I feel that, you know, client, oh, ini mahal, very expensive, change, 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 change. But it's okay. I tell them, yeah, it's your building. It's okay. It's your money. But I put the statement by saying, put in record, if you change this thing that, this will be implication of maintenance and many more. So we need to advise to your client. And end up, it's okay. We found out that the satisfaction value is there. And I tell you, this is a promise I told them. And I was like, okay. So the building become an iconic in University Malaya. It's like a eight walls, Feng Shui elements, it's like a hand facing to keep blood. Yeah, you look like a hand. Abstraction idea is beginning with an art. And then on that year, we won a, a gold medal from Pam. So this is my mentor. Well, to share with you, when you have this creation, when you find one corner, I tell you the truth. This, I, I don't mind to share with you. Every architect during construction, they will find one corner to look every day, the movement of that building. You know what happened to this time? I brought coffee and one cigar. When you're looking on your building, when you look, the people use your building with a smile and happy, that's the best moment. Your tears come out by looking all the experience. <sighs> Satisfaction. So you, we fear rejection because architecture is about rejection, my students. But we want attention, craft, affection, and dream of perfection. Now is time. Wake up and rise. The architects of tomorrow in Gajah Mada University. You go out there and be ready. Tell yourself that design your life the way you want it to be. Because you, you are the creator of your own destiny. Remember this before I end up in this life. Five minutes. Oh, five minutes extra. Wow, Frida. Five minutes extra, man. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Okay, in this life, listen up. I know you passed all this journey in university, okay? As a student. But always remember this, adik-adik. Abang-abang, kakak-kakak, bapak-bapak, ibu-ibu. There's no such security in this life. It's only an opportunity. Zoom, participants, two things to define yourself. One is about your patience 
when you have nothing. Second, when you have everything, it's about your attitude. So success is not destination. It's a journey. Thank you. Oh my goodness, thank you so much for Adrianta. Um, right. So, yeah, you good? All right, yeah. It's like Friday sermon already, yeah? I don't need to go to the Friday prayers letter, yeah? Thank you, Adrianta. <laughs> right. Um, but, so I'd like to invite all of the speakers, uh, you know, to the stage. And may I ask for the assistants to bring another couch uh, to the stage? So that, you know, we will not be packed, uh, congested, sitting on the same singular couch. So truly an exhibition of the student strength, yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Working as a team. Give it our applause. Right. All right, yeah. Uh, please, have a seat, everyone. Uh, yeah, right. All right. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, so, you know, as uh, as as the opportunity to have to moderate this session, I guess I would like to revisit the main topic of our uh, event today, yeah? Asians uh, visions. So just speaking frankly from my uh, lengthy experience, you know, uh, be based in the US, right? You know, uh, seeing the cities over there. And one thing that struck me, you know, when I came back is that, you know, how, to some extent, how how influential it is, you know, those stuff from those part of the world, U.S., in the shaping, in the uh, creation of you know cities, architecture in Asia, and to some extent, to me, you know, that leads to a rather worse turn, as you can see, uh, you know experience in Indonesia, for instance, the development of new cities, new town, you surely didn't solve what the problems it intend to address. Tokyo shows us, you know, the experience of actually turning toward the better, better man, right? But here, you know, in 2000, early 2000, the share of people using bus transit was like 70%, but now less than 10%. So, you know, it literally turning toward the rather worse turn than what we expect. So, you know, my question, and I guess it applies to everyone, to our esteemed speakers here, is like, you know, how could we see or orient ourselves toward the excellence that we have developed in our own region, in our own country, without having to look into something that might not necessarily be applicable or relevant to us to our own backyard. Again, this is something that, you know, uh, an open ended question, and I invite everyone here that would like to comment on that question before I provide the audience opportunities for to uh, question to provide another commentaries. So please. All right. Okay, okay. What was the question again? Yeah, so how can we shape Asian vision without having to? you know, to be influenced, you know, bad way from other okay. Western countries. Okay, okay, I can answer this. Wait, I do timing. Timing, you know why timing? So that I don't answer too much. <laughs> okay, so basically, uh, Papa is saying that uh, there's a lot of influence from other countries. And I remember when I was very young, my grandfather is a, a civil engineer. Uh, he works as a district engineer to do railways and buildings. So he came from, he studied in Bristol back in the 1920s. 
last year, I think he uh, 20, last year he passed away at 97. And uh, he brought, he told me that a lot of the architecture during that time, 30s, 40s, brought from UK, graduate from US, going to the Asian countries. And then now the transformation of things slowly happening. There's internet. Last time they cannot compare. It's very difficult. So I have to travel. But now there's internet. Everyone can see each other, uh, see all the content. So you can experience and also go if you want, but you can compare the project together. I want to get the plan last time very difficult. Now it's easy. You can go Google and then find the article. But the most interesting part is that one of the things that not most of the architect or not really architect, all the countries, same problem is we cannot uh, look into people's strength, a country's strength. Every country have different strength. You know, Malaysia, we are, the, we are under British. So our strength is administration and management. So if you see the buildings, we really follow law, management, and everything. And then come Philippines. They are very good at resiliency, portable architecture, but no one see that, right? And then you see Indonesia now is really developing. Malaysia, 20 years ago, Mahathir, he developed Malaysia. Now you have the new Mahathir, which is Pak Jokowi, which is from us. We saw Pak Jokowi open up to youth to spearhead the country. That's amazing, right? Yeah, so that the transformation. I see this new movement is not only 10 years now, another 20 years because your leaders now is only 20 to 30 years old. Right? Yeah, leaders, your, 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 your minister. In another 20 years, they will be 40. They will be seasoned politicians and businessmen to develop the country further. And right now, building the new city. Other countries, Vietnam, they are military. Right? Military. I met architects in Vietnam. I don't... I don't understand what they say. But when they give me interpreter, they are becoming like Japanese architect already. You go there to see their work. Usually, if we go competition, only 10 projects good. I go and um, uh, for the competition, all 100 is good. All the 100 projects is good. I don't know who can win. Right? Because everything is really, really amazing. So, if the, we are not short of ideas in Asia. You just need to see within the Asian region what is the best thing? And we cannot also not see the other countries in the Europe, America, and also in Japan because they are already there designing the future. We are designing the distant future. They are already there in the future future. Yeah, man? Like macam itu... Oh, sorry, don't angry, okay? Nikken Seke. They have the Toyota Nikken Seke. They have the driverless Toyota City. Then who? who, do, who which, one, which one? Then, then who? Okay, one of the driverless city. So the driverless city, we, our, we only dream to design. But in Japan, they already do it. So that's already the future. In some of the countries, they're already putting uh, they already putting materials in the lava to create Building materials, crazy, right? Uh, so we can learn from Asia, the distant future, but we can learn for developed countries, the future forward of how to create, to build our city and learn from their mistake and make our country better. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, uh, Barida. Please, Ms. Wikako, you have to comment. Well, after this uh, big speech, <laughs> I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> But uh, like we have a project abroad as well. Like now we have big in China, or we are also hopefully getting more projects from Indonesia as well. And now, like um, the beginning of the time that we started doing a business in China, it was quite difficult to to go against a big names like Norman Foster or even SOM or you name Zaha Hadid or you name it. But nowadays, uh, China has been de developed a little bit, and then they started to learn what is really important uh, uh, saying about us, you know, like, okay, we can, we have money, we can hire anyone in the world, yeah. but still the people are not satisfying it. So now the, for us, we have a lot of projects, um, uh, 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 thanks free, uh, getting uh, 
from Chinese client is that uh, like I presented, uh, they appreciate what the successful uh, thing, uh, for example, the Tokyo had, like we think about pedestrians or we think about how to connect to with the train station and people appreciate that. So to me that fundamental of a human being, it's, it's the same thing. So something good thing about the, what we have, we could apply to the another country as well. But um, also we had to respect the local culture. And now it's a big uh, keyword uh, nowadays, it's the global. So being a global at the same time, um, appreciating the local culture. So um, don't uh, go against or don't try to compete um, uh, other countries or other cities, but respect what you have. And then um, using what you could run from other countries and then uh, find a way uh, to the um, project or design the um, um, replying uh, what you really want to do. Now that could be the one of the step that you could think about. Am I correcting your questions? <laughs> yeah, no, you definitely touch on a very Thank pertinent you. aspect. Uh, right, yeah. So please, uh, if Yuki or... Yes, I'm still thinking. <laughs> All right, yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, from uh, my own experience, uh, uh, to work at in the state or so uh join the the lab in the Denmark or anywhere the in West side. Uh to be honest, uh I found uh Asian culture anywhere. You know, yeah. uh, we have a, a wide range and the lead culture and the history also, then uh, I found it out anywhere in the world, actually, that it's my own impression uh, to study there. Then so, so the maybe, so the world is not separated in Asian and the West right. already, no? Yeah. So, so we already uh, there, no? Right? Then so <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I really uh, feel so uh, now. Then so yeah, <laughs> that's my yeah. Asian <laughs> vision so and uh, yeah. yeah. So just focus, uh, human being, right? Because uh, the every everyone has uh, your background, your own background, and the, the your family and your history and the the uh, everything you have already, no. So the, we can uh, enjoy <laughs> uh, anywhere in the world, right? So it's uh, my Asian vision. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ki. I make it very simple, precise, and concise. Ringkasan. I echo what our panels has said just now, but for my response to add on as an Asian architects, you know, right. uh, we, we need to be proud of ourselves about our architecture. I think we need to be proud. Looking to the West is only like inspiration so that we can inspire. It's not copy. It's not stealing. We just be inspiring because this is what the late Zahadi has mentioned. Architecture is not easy to, to, to teach, to educate, but it's about inspiration, inspiring. So for, for you all, the Indonesian architects, or even Jakarta architects. I come from Malaysia. Both of them come from Japan, from Tokyo. When we came here, we are came here with a fascinating of your architecture style. You know, you should be proud. You know, you should be proud because if I go to Tokyo to see your project just now, I will be proud of you because this is your culture, your background, and everything. But sorry. <laughs> As an architect, we need to have respect. You see? So if I go to Indonesia, to Jakarta, I cannot say, hey, Pak Denny, Pak Dista, kenapa architecture ini macam, kenapa tidak boleh, umum mengajar pula? Enggak. Maksudnya, we cannot do and teach them because we need to respect their background, their culture and everything because you have your own technology, your own background, your own skill. Even Malaysia, we have our own. 
Japanese have their own. But if you go to America, to go to UK, we just go there and absorb and inspire that. It's not to steal or what. But for me, moderator, students, we encourage you, if you want to become better designer, better architects, with the highest ethic, travel a lot. That's my answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so let me try to touch base on that again. But before, I'd like to give the floor also for the students, to the students. So please, if anyone would like to ask questions to this esteemed speakers during this rare opportunities, by all means, anyway. The moderator, both of us from Yahoo from the Kako, oh, of course. Yeah. we bring a souvenirs. Uh, who can give a very good question? We'll have from Mikako Architect. Ah. <laughs> Come. Okay, number one. Yeah. Also, Mikako said uh, if they uh, ask question, got potential apply for internship. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the first question. Question. Please introduce your name, yeah? This is the report that we give in to the, the clients abroad. So this is the, from 2002, I think. Right. And then I have 10. Ah, 10 questions. Okay. There you go. Hey, I'm Mustafa Alaya. Thank you for the question. Uh, thank you for the opportunities. Uh, I want to ask Mr. Adrienda. As, to, uh, as architecture student, we often have difficulties in design process. And in the end, we feel this satisfied or experience failure in your opinion how do we as students deal with this failure Exterior. yeah can you repeat question moderator because he right so <laughs> my recollection is that but he'll uh, uh, yeah. but uh, yeah, uh, she asked how you know what we saw are your successful projects okay but you yeah. know Oh. There might be something that you might not necessarily be proud of because it was failed or for, for any other reason. All right. So how did you handle those kind of situations? Okay. Uh, very good question. Thank you, Adi. Okay, you may sit. Uh, relax. Okay, students, listen this. If you scared, takut, you have to be brief. If you weak, you need to be strong. Okay? If you... You know, if you achieve success, you need to be humble. Humble. So from my experience, this today only two projects. I have a few projects, but because of short of time, my, my moral sprint is about to inspire you as a student, to inspire you as a future Indonesian architects. Architecture is about failure. Architecture is about rejection. So don't worry about that. Architecture is about, it's not about you punch people and you receive punch and then you fall down and giving up. So it's about how you receive your punch and rise up. That's an architect, especially for Asian architect. So we learn every project, there is a failure because nothing in this life is perfect. Architects, we learn from failure from one experience to another experience. If you read about Friend Rod Rice, he does a few failure projects and he learned. If you ask Zaha Hadid itself, the late Zaha Hadid, you know, she was struggling doing her exercise of practice until people deny her design up to until 50 years old, people recognize her works. Sure, you know what I mean? So for you and for your question just now, Learn from the experience. But are you ready to taking the truth? Are you can handle the truth now? If I Papa Adventa Mutaka ini, can you handle the truth? Are you ready? Are you ready? No. Whatever you learn from university, only 10% can be utilized when you're working. 10%. The other 90% from working experience. So be ready. One, one of the things that I would like to add is uh, there's no issue, no problem. It's there's always a challenge. Yeah, right. Uh, thank you very much, Pa Adrienta. 
And yeah, please, Ma Aya, come forward. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I still saw someone raise their hand, so Mas Iqbal, maybe. Uh, Ladies, come on. Don't get the boy in front of the senior. We want ladies to go back here. Come. Seven, seven, seven. Ah, okay. Ah. All right. Okay. Okay. Um. Thank you very much. Uh, for the presentation. Uh, good morning. Uh, for us and oh hi, good Uh, my name is Muhammad Iqbal Surya Utama. Uh, my nickname is Iqbal. Uh, for the presentation, I enjoy the presentation about uh all of the presentation. Uh, if I could summarize, uh. Mrs. Yuki Ito is encouraging the exhibition. Uh, I mean, uh, engaging people by exhibition and mini installation and etc. And then for Mrs. Mikako Oshima by the public infrastructure that can engage more people. And for Mr. Raza by using cultural infrastructure such as heritage uh, like that. And for Mr. Adrianta, by using uh, such marketing presentation, yes. <laughs> and then uh, what is about uh, architecture is I could point it out is enjoyment and exploration. And we know that Asia has a lot of culture uh, opposite by the Western and we know that such as Indonesia, we have a lot of culture and Japan has a culture and who love uh, and one and I as one of that that love Japan culture that's it's called Wibu. Uh, <laughs> so that uh it's about a lot, uh, a lot of culture, but for Southeast Asia, we know that. A lot of them is can uh, including such uh, developing countries so that it challenges by poverty or developing countries and etc. And this is about ACYA, I, I mean, uh, young architects institutions. Uh, so, how could we shape our future, especially in? Southeast Asia by the constraints I mentioned before, so that the future will be more sustainable. Thank you. Oh. Yes, that's the question. A question. Yes, uh, I want to ask uh, of your opinion uh, about how could we, as a young architect, uh, shape our developing countries with the construction of uh, such as poverty or etc. like that. Well, it's a heavy question that uh, I would like to know as well, but... One thing is that uh, when you work with uh, your client or developers or whoever that you have to work with, always um, not just the project or not just the client, think about the neighborhood and societies uh, or city, you know, in a bigger scale as well. Also, you have to think about all the every single detail how to round these corners and how to sharpen that edge or how to curve the walls and things like that so during the design process i try uh, to picture 
uh, like bird eye, you know, the big uh, picture uh, of the project and try to keep that image always uh, when I handle the project. And sometimes when you work on the details, you kind of lose what your vision was or what your big picture is. So, and then uh, as you go uh, further into your career, you have to kind of manage your team as well. And uh, always what I do is that uh, uh, try not to lose this big picture. So that is the, the sometimes the concept that the, the day one you think about. So um, coming back to your question is that um, you always have to think about uh, next 20 years or 50 years because influence of the buildings are quite um, uh, big in the, in also in the time wise also money wise you know budget wise and then also the um, uh, considering the city fabric so when you have a concept um, you try to include those concepts into your project, convince your client, convince your uh, local authorities, and try to improve your city or your neighborhood as well, not just uh, your single project. Yeah. My job, uh, my answer is very simple. Two things architect week in. Yeah. Number one, being in the local government. We are not participating to make the change at the local level. Not many architects are busy doing buildings, making money. We say we help people, but we are get paid for it when you have to volunteer. Number two, we need architect to become Bapak President for every country. Yeah? When architect become president for all every country, we can make the change. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Andrian. Uh, yes. Andrian. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm a second year in Bachelor of Architecture in this university. Uh, and I and I ha actually have uh, several questions for each of you. Okay. Yeah. So maybe like one question, Adrian. Okay. Uh, yeah. Maybe I want to uh, learn about all of your workflow because workflow workflow is really important uh, in designing process and uh, doing. Yeah. Some, Put the microphone uh, closer to your mouth. Project. Louder, louder. Oh, louder. Uh, I I actually want to know uh, deeper about your workflow. So uh, workflow, yeah. yeah, workflow. Yes, workflow. Uh, mainly, mainly uh, for uh, Mikako san, <laughs> because uh, you work in such a big firm, and. Uh, I just want to know more about that in particularly. Workflow in terms of project or like daily workflow? Yeah, I think a more of a project workflow. Project. It's, I mean, probably it's the same. Uh, we start from the concept design to schematic design to design development and uh, detailed design. Then the once um, budget is fixed, we go to the bidding, construction bidding. And that you have to negotiate with the contractor. And then the, finally you can go to the construction site. And then construction site, we do the construction administration, make sure that our intent is fully uh, delivered to the contractors. And make sure that the, what, whatever that you designed is uh, applied to the con construction. And then uh, happily uh, you finish the construction and then the, you're gonna de deliver the project to the client. So I think it's the same, same, no? Yeah. And then in the middle, we have to do the working uh, building permit. That takes a while as well. And sometimes the, the, the project, as big as uh, what I show, is takes more time to negotiate with city, apply all the building code, all, all the local codes and everything. So that's uh, what it is. And projects like that big takes like, like 10 years to be completed. 
Okay, uh, I will ask. Firstly, let me introduce myself. My name is Joshua. Uh, I will ask a simple question. As our predecessors, you have worked on our shoes. Uh, we as architecture students. So I would I like to ask, what would us be? Uh, what would uh, ask as an architecture student uh, should take the next step? Uh, what should the, our next step will be? Maybe Mr. Adianta. What is the next step? Let me share with you what my mentor taught me when I was at your age. The first thing is you do projection of mind. You know, apa maksudnya projection of mind? Ask yourself now, list down what you should get in 10 years time. List down now. So you, what, what you know, I took to, to, to you yesterday with Gladys, sit down now, how old are you now, 20 years old? You need to manifest yourself in 10 years time before you achieve 30 years old, what is your achievement need to be achieved? I did that, to be honest. My mentor taught me, Adrianta, I was 17 years old at that time. Now you sit down, go to your room, list down, what is your projection? in 10 years time, when I was 27 years old. So one of my lists, I, was, I just said to myself that I want to become an architect, a professional architect. I want to have a firm. I want to have this, 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 this. To tell the truth, if you do that, 70% to 60% definitely will achieve. Definitely will achieve. Because why? You need to create dream. When you create dream, you need to believe your dream to come true. And final thing is make sure you achieve it. So this is a very brief explanation. Projection of your mind. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> One more. Okay. okay. Thank you for the uh, time. Yeah. So maybe after the the, the guy. Then the lady will be the last, yeah? Yeah. Give it to you. Firstly, thank you for the time. Uh, I am Azlan al Ishrok. I'm the first year architecture student. Uh, I have a question to Mr. Rida Razak. Uh, I'm interested with the revitalization of heritage building with sustainable management in approachment of organizational approachment. One of the examples above is Rumah Tangsi, uh, which, was originally, which was originally a private house and then turned into a public and inclusive that functional as a whole. So the function is very uh, variative. Uh, in the next project, uh, I hear that Mr. Rida Razak will revitate uh, like an uh, old palace, right? And I think the old palace can be, uh, sorry, does Mr. Rida wish to also turn it into inclusive place? Like with multiple, with multiple function? I think the old palace can be Reactivate as specifically as a museum, such as the memory place, such as uh, Istana Kenangan in Kuala Kangsar, such as Istana Lama Sri Menanti in Kuala Pila. Okay, I think the museum as is not very inclusive, but it will be specific visitors that interested in history of Malay Sultanate. Thank you. So, uh, how? What do you think, Mr. Rida? Thank you. So thank you for the question. You mentioned Kuala Kangsa. I went to school there. So it's very near to my school. Uh, so the palace, I'm very familiar. You mentioned Kuala Pila. I am from Kuala Pila. Uh, so my, my village. So 
So for the palace, eh, it's a little bit tricky because I went to Nepal with Adrianta. Problem, because when the earthquake, all the palace and all the ornaments, temple, flat. So they don't want any money because community-based development. But when the building is start, uh, completed back again by the community, it becomes another museum again. And if another earthquake comes, yeah. flat again, and the community is uh, dead. Yeah, problem. So now with the palace approach, we are still thinking whether to go full-on inclusive or halfway inclusive. There was previously hotels, but now currently I will be working with a lot of like uh, communities that is high end. With Rumah Tangsi, I don't want to do high end. But with this palace, probably I will have to do high end approach. That will be different. For the another project, Odeon, which is the old cinema from the 50s, I want intend to make it into a concert hall. So those kind of thinking. So architect have to be very creative, right? Always think of what are the programs that is potential to activate the heritage building. Yeah, don't, don't go. Museum, easy. Office, easy. Shop, easy. How to integrate the program into a hybrid program. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. You. Thank you. Um, I'm a bit conscious of time. So those who already have stand up um, can stay because you will receive, you know, the books. But the last one will be the lady. Yeah. Sorry, can you hear my voice? Okay. Uh, I have... Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, I, I have one question for Ms. Mikako Oshima. I'm very interested in the idea of a walkable city. And I found it that it's very hard to implement in here because of the climate, it's very hot. And so the idea of my question is, how do you come up with a design architectural wise or spatial wise on how do we promote this idea of walkability and promote it further and enforce it in a country that is not very walkable in the beginning. Mm, Thank you. Good question. You know, that's also a challenge <laughs> to me. Yeah. But one thing is that even you make a, let's say, like shopping mall or a building like this, you know, for me that uh, walking in the, this uh, outside is feeling quite nice. You feel the air, you feel the the trees, you know, sometimes it, when it's raining, you feel the sound. So when the, there's the shading or shadow, it's sometimes it's nice also to walk around. So maybe using this kind of like courtyard idea into your project, or when you make a, like big buildings, you can make a pass. It's nice pass journey, like, you know, with the um, top lights, um, uh, windows, or maybe some, even you can have a tree inside of the building. Um, yeah. So um, for me, it's like another good um, example can be uh, some project in, for example, Hawaii. I think it's a similar um, environment. It's also a nice um, uh, city to walk around also. So don't afraid of being uh, going outside. It's hot, I know, but once you are inside of the really, you have a, a milder temperature with air conditioning, everything. But also like walking outside, it's uh, for me, it's quite nice. So being, uh, um, um, uh, don't afraid of uh, using this hot climate, but try to incorporate the like nature uh, as uh, we used to be, you know. So that me that could be the big challenge. Also, like when we, I was working on the project in Singapore, the first thing the client asked was uh, put the canopies so the students can go one building to another without raining. So always uh, in your climate, you have to think about that as well. Does it help? <laughs> Thank you. So please, uh, all three of you come to the stage. Yeah, or, you know. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you, and apologies, we, we don't have much time left, yeah? Uh, all right. <laughs> of course, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mikako. Thank you. Yeah. So now it's reciprocally our turn to give the esteemed speakers here a bit of a souvenir. Oh. Yeah, don't sit in the back, guys. Pa Denny. 
Pak Denny, come on. Uh, come together uh, on stage. Yeah, uh, let's, Pak Hari, yes, uh, so if Parida Mikako can also stand up, we could uh, take picture when Pak Hari give the souvenir to, so, okay, yeah. <laughs> Of course, right. Uh, this is our office brochure. You can take a look at it later. I, I'm going to leave it too. And if someone wants to take it, just take it. <laughs> and this is the uh, journal that we publish uh, four times ah, a year, right. uh, uh, showing every project that we are tipped on. And we have uh, information about the uh, Zipri part as well. So if you are interested in looking at it, you have it too. Yeah. And also there's another one. I just corrected the other version from the office. Uh, uh, when we published uh, 50 years anniversary, we did a little uh, like book about our journey. So I'm gonna give this to him. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so find it in the library. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You see, I just graduated from University Gajah Mada. Yeah.